right. I guess I'm all in here and everything. Um, just waiting for everything to come up here. All righty. Well, I guess good morning, evening, afternoon, good night, <laughs> whatever it is, wherever you are. Uh, interesting, you know, tool we have here nowadays with the internet. Uh, people from all over the world can tune in, so that's really neat. So, hopefully everybody's been having a good week. <clears throat> and I guess we'll we'll start out here with uh, prayer requests. So, fire when ready. Hi, right, everybody. All right, there you go. Yeah, you can you can submit questions later. Right now, we're just going to do prayer requests. Then we do the study, and then after that, then we'll open up for questions. Um, all right, get my wife off thyroid meds. Um, wife. Okay. Peaceful sleep. Uh, new game addiction. Temperate. Uh, trouble with the wall. Okay, yeah, we I don't we haven't been to the post office in a few days, so I'm not sure um, what that would be. We didn't get the letter, in other words. Um, okay, please pray, Mr. Joe. will talk to me again. Um, Okay. Um, personal struggles. And son out of public school. Okay. Got yours, Ada. Um, I request pray for the Lord to find me a way to stay home and pray for myself and life. Off grid and as as possible. Um, work at home and off grid. <sighs> I'll go with Parkinson's and blood disease and blood disease. Oh boy, <laughs> getting ahead of me here. 
Um, please, please pray for me, my one-year-old daughter and our baby as we look for a new home. Okay. Um, um, for Natalia and children. Sorry if I'm missing any here. I'm trying to go through these quick. Um, Catholic family members. I'm writing them down. Maybe I'll just read them from over here, I guess. Uh, just trying to... I'm used to writing things down. I concentrate a little bit better that way. Um, okay, there's something over. More Christians come out of churches. Got it. Find a new job and protect my daughter. She only has me and all of the witnesses. Thank you. Um, Okay. Good. That's good to hear, brother. That's really good to hear that everything went well and that she was safe. Prayer request from last week. We prayed for Brother Charles last week. Huh. Um, Seven-year-old Abigail. Birth deformities. Um. Big brother and um, big brother alcohol addiction, I'll say. So, okay. Um, Yeah, brother John, Gail. Yeah, I get it. Um, I mean, I guess I'm kind of just hearkening back to the old days of being in church buildings. I I was the prayer request guy, and I'd write stuff down, <laughs> and I'd be up there, open up with prayer. So, old habits, I guess. Um, John, to get out. Of, of isolation in healthcare center. Care center. Okay. And you know, I think it's good for all of us, you know, to really make a little list of things, just basics that we can just pray for each other throughout the week. The 
hold this. Got it. Um, okay. Uh, I guess that's going to be it. We'll, we'll start with a word of prayer. Um, so, okay. Um, uh, not going to be taking any more requests here. We're going to get to praying for it and then I'll say a few things and we'll get into our study today. So, excuse me. Um, let's go to the word to the Lord in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I thank you for our time of fellowship here again and studying your word. And now, Lord, we have some requests to bring before you. We, but before we do, we just want to thank you, Lord, for salvation. And thank you for your word. Thank you for clothing and food and, and shelter and, and uh, all the many blessings that you bless us with, Lord. And I pray that we would uh, all just uh, remember those blessings and, and not take things for granted. And uh, Lord, we'll start off here this morning with... Uh, uh, one brother has a wife that has uh, that's on thyroid medication. Lord, I pray that you would please give them the wisdom to start to heal naturally and and uh, get off that medication and uh, to look at different nutritional causes and effects of having thyroid issues. Some of the adrenal type of things there that that lead to that and, and fluoride in the water I know can lead to thyroid problems. Um, so I just pray that you would please help them to study that and research it and you would. Um, be there in the healing process. I pray, Lord, for peaceful sleep. Um, I can attest to that, Lord, and, and you know what I go through. And but I just pray, Lord, for not just the the one that that requested it, but for everybody that we would all have peaceful sleep and and uh, be able to get good rest because it's very important. Uh, I do pray for the younger brother, Lord, about video game addiction. I know that that it's very hard to get away from it. Um, just getting drawn in and playing games for hours and hours and hours, just wasting your, your life away and, and ruining eyesight and, and health and just how bad it is, Lord. I, and I just pray that you would help him to get victory over that sin. Um, I do pray, Lord, also for the, for who was that uh, prayed and said, or, or asked for prayer for them being more patient and temperate in their life. Um, that's another struggle that uh, I know a lot have and, and um, just being patient with people. And, and uh, I do pray that you would help them with that. I pray for uh, the, the one that said that about that they're in trouble with the law. Don't know exactly what's going on there, Lord. And um, I do pray for them in that situation. And I pray, Lord, uh, for the um, another, another one that said about that they would like to be able to talk to their sister again. And I know family problems are a big issue right now a lot of families breaks off contact with each other and and i pray lord that they would not compromise your truth to be able to restore fellowship to family members but that all of us would stand strong for your word no matter what it costs i pray lord for um uh, sister ada's uh, personal struggles you know what they are lord and and that uh, you would please help her to be able to get their son out of uh, public school and open up her husband's eyes to the reality of what the schools are and and the fact that even now it's a lot more dangerous with all of this um, stuff that's going on with this supposed pandemic thing and everything else. I just And the violence that's coming into these schools and, and everywhere else. I pray, Lord, that you would open up his, his mind and his eyes and that he would agree to take their son out of school, public schooling. And um, I pray, Lord, for uh, um, Kenneth Passanissi, that you would please help him with the thing of being able to work closer to home and, and um, be able to um, be off grid and, and start to develop the sort of a self-sustaining lifestyle there. And, and I pray, Lord, um, I pray for that situation. I pray for the, um, which whoever it was that has the uncle with Parkinson's disease and also the blood disease. Um, I pray again that you would help them to do the research and and some study that might help find some natural cures for that. Um, I pray for a new home for Natalia and her children. I do pray that you would lead them to the right place. And uh, for Catholic family members, Lord, for salvation. 
I know a lot of viewers here have family members that are bound up in Roman Catholicism. And um, it's a very hard thing to talk to relatives that are in that system um, because they think that you're that that's the one true church and that them being part of it, you know, assures them of salvation and and attacks against Catholicism they they view as attacks on you. And so, Lord, I just pray that you would please show more and more um, the wickedness and corruption within the Catholic Church and and that the Catholic family members would see it and start to lose faith in that wicked system and that they would truly want to have a personal relationship with you and not through organized religion. Um, and Lord, on that note, I pray that more Christians uh, would come out of these church buildings. I think that the this whole thing of churches shutting down because the government told them to should really show most people that the church buildings are fake and that they're just social clubs that are run by the government. And I pray that more and more people would see it and have the courage to step away from that and not go back and that they would want to have a, a right relationship with you and, and a personal Bible study. And I do pray for that. And I pray Lord um, for the, one of them that here that said that they're looking for a new job. I pray that they would be able to find a good job. Um, and for the little girl, seven-year-old Abigail with her birth deformities, um, I don't know the whole situation there, Lord, but I just pray that you would open up the eyes of her Amish parents, that that uh, they would understand that their system is not going to save them and their, their works that they do uh, will only send them to hell. Um, I do pray for that. Um, and uh, the one that, that talked about their big, bigger, older brother having the alcohol addiction, and it's really just ruining his life and i'm sure that the stay-at-home orders and all the other things aren't making it any better and so lord i do pray that you would please uh, bring him to the end of himself and help him to realize that the alcohol is only going to kill him over time and that he needs to get away from it needs to get saved um i do pray for that um and the uh, one man named John. I just pray that he would get out of isolation in the healthcare center that he's in. Um, again, give him wisdom what to do there. And I just pray, Lord, that your power would be there and that the people that are forcing him to be in isolation would would repent of what they're doing and that he could get out of that. And uh, Lord, for boldness for all of us. And uh, for me this morning too, Lord, because there's some hard things that I need to say. And um, I just pray, Lord, that you give me wisdom for this and all of us wisdom to be able to stand up against the wiles of the devil and all the, the many deceptions that are out there. And I just uh, pray that we would all be attentive to your word and uh, submit ourselves to you, Lord, and um, that you'd speak through me now. And I ask it all in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Okay. Um, what we're going to do now is we are going to uh, I'm going to be basically, I'm going to, I, I still haven't con figured out how to shut off the comments section while we're doing the live stream thing. I did actually contact StreamYard, so waiting to hear back. But, um, uh, what we're going to do, I'm not going to be answering any questions, and I would like to say, please don't write the comments over there. I'm not going to see them, I'm not going to re reply to them, whatever else. If you have something that you'd like to say about, hey, you said this about that verse, but I have a question, save it for the end. Let's have a discussion about what is preached here this morning at the end of this, after I'm done with all the scriptures and we go through it, and uh, then we can discuss it. And, um, you know, there there are times when we can do questions and answers and, and whatnot, but the, the purpose of this morning, the purpose of coming together for this is to be challenged from the, the scriptures, from the word of God. And um, so let's just kind of keep it to that. And let's not have conversations over in the comments, because number one, like I said, I'm not going to see it. If I can figure out how to shut it off, I'm going to. Um, just while we're doing the Bible study, I want you to be reading from your King James Bible, turning in the scriptures. And I want you, it's, it's so important for you to stay in the word. Um, the most important thing, in fact, on this earth is this book right here and you need to you need to be reading it and not just you know a chapter a day to keep the devil away you know you, you need to study it so we're going to get started here and 
Um, so please uh, don't spend time over there in the comments going back and forth and whatever else. Please stop doing that. Uh, turn in your King James Bible. So you want to get your King James Bible out. And, um, you know, we're going to have a study now in the Word of God. So I'm going to cover up my comment section over there. Um, and we're going to talk today about returning to the days of Noah. Uh, there's a lot of things that have been in my mind on this subject. And I have, um, I've said a lot and done a lot with about end times type of stuff and whatever else over the years. And, uh, it is a very big subject. And I just I looked and I, I wasn't sure if I still had it on YouTube, but, um, let me just do the, um, share screen here thing real quick i'll just i'll just show this um right there's the study this audio study and if i minimize it here um it was uploaded november 2nd 2012 but i originally preached it in june of 2010 so um i've been talking about this thing of could times get rough? Are problems coming? You know, there's a lot of the, the prosperity preachers, a lot of the the um, modern churches and whatever else. It's all just positive. Everything's getting good. Your best life now, you know, the whole thing. And they don't want to talk about the reality of what Christians have gone through. They don't want to talk about what could be happening in this country and will be happening in, happening in this country very soon. And the only reason I said could be is because we don't know when the timing of the catching up of the body of Christ is. We have no idea. So the Lord could come and get us. I do believe in the imminent return of Jesus Christ, but I will never ever teach that it will never get rough and that there will never be a problem and everything's just going to be a, we could just, just happy satin pillow, sitting on a satin pillow, you know, nice times. Um, and I'm going to go through some of the prophecies of the end times and see what we are heading into. And I'm doing this because I love you as my brothers and sisters in Christ. And there's going to be some rough things that are going to be said, get ready for it. But there's going to be a positive ending to this because I'm going to give you some solutions that I myself, I have to, I have to take my own advice before I can preach it. If I say to you, you need to have natural health. You need to stay away from sugar and whatever else. And then you see me eating jelly donuts while I'm doing my, you know, live stream and drinking a big two liter thing of Dr. Pepper. Well, I'm a hypocrite. All right. If I tell you that you need to get off grid and here's how you get away from debt and here's how you do this and that. And then I myself am drowning in debt. Um, that's a problem. I'm a hypocrite. Uh, so for many years, I have practiced what I've preached for a long time and it has gotten me uh, kicked and made fun of and knocked around by so many different people. And uh, we'll get into that today, but I'm telling you, the warnings that I have given, the the stuff I have said, to me, it was always just, it made sense. It's just right there. There it is. It wasn't some kind of a, you know, Lord spoke in my mind, and I have to say what the Lord just told me. I had it in a dream. I know where things are headed. I can see what's coming. And you can go back and listen to that old sermon that was preached, you know, over 10 years ago now. June of 2010. It's now August 16th, 2020. Over 10 years ago, I was preaching this thing and saying, rough times are coming. The economy's headed down. This, you know, all this other stuff. And here we are. Um, talking with a brother, and, and he was telling me about an old video I had up for a while about imminent martial law here in America. And again, I was saying, here's what's going to happen. Here's what's coming. And it was 2016. So four years ago, um, I've been seeing this stuff and you know, you have to make up your mind. Am I going to prepare for this or just no preparations, just go blindly into this thing and hope for the best. Uh, I don't think that that's a good idea, but let's get into it here. Matthew chapter 24. We're going to start off by going to Matthew chapter 24. And again, you know, I'm not even seeing the comments over here because I have it blocked. But please be respectful. Please don't get in there and and use this as a time of 
yapping back and forth. Okay. Um, I'm a very nice guy, but, uh, you know, I'm going to get a little bit irritated if I see some of that stuff going on. Um, you need to follow along in, in your King James Bible. Okay. Um, Matthew chapter 24, verse 32 through 39. Um, now learn a parable of the fig tree when his branch is yet tender and putteth forth leaves, ye know that summer is nigh. So likewise, ye, when ye shall see all these things, know that it is near even at the doors. Verily I say unto you, this generation shall not pass till all these things be fulfilled. Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Jesus Christ talking about the second coming. He's writing to Jews here before he dies on the cross. So it's he's talking to Jews, giving future prophecies for people that go into the time of Jacob's trouble. That's what Matthew chapter 24 is about. Okay. But there is the thing at the beginning of sorrows in the early part of Matthew chapter 24, which is where we're at right now. I fully believe that. But um, I think this is part of it. Verse 37. I'm sorry, verse uh, 36. But of that day and hour knoweth no man, no, not the angels of heaven, but my father only. Talking about his second coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. But as the days of Noah were, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Noah, there's your Greek coming into English. Hebrew Old Testament coming into English would be Noah. So it's talking about the same one there. How do you know that? Well, verse 38. For as in the days that were before the flood they were eating and drinking marrying and giving in marriage until the day that noah entered into the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them all away so shall also the coming of the son of man be okay so you know it's talking about noah because it talks about the ark he got into the ark and there was the flood so there you go um and that's the right way that the translators did it there um but what was the condition of the world before the flood in the days of Noah. Well, it says here in our text, verse 38, as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered into the ark. Noah entered into the ark. So it was what would be called fairly normal. Eating and drinking is not an abnormal thing. Marrying and giving in marriage. So they were just, you know, it was, it was a kind of a normal world. Jesus really doesn't get into a lot of the bad things that were happening there. But the Lord wants you to go back and see what was the actual condition. So let's go back to Genesis chapter 6. Turn back in your Bible to Genesis chapter 6. The whole way to the beginning. If you're newly saved and you, you know, not really sure how where different books are and whatever, well, try to give you enough time to get there. It's not like my normal videos where I can just pause, say, just pause the video and look it up in the table of contents and, you know, um, can't really do that. You have to get there. But Genesis chapter six, the first book in your Bible. Okay. Genesis chapter six, beginning in verse one, we're going to see the condition of the world before the flood in the days of Noah. Why did God send such a horrible thing as the flood? And the flood was 40 days and 40 nights. This time of Jacob's trouble that's coming is seven years. So um, God was angry back then. He's more angry today. And But here's the condition of the world. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and daughters were born unto them, that the sons of God saw the daughters of men, that they were fair, and they took them wives of all which they chose. Okay. Now they say, well, there you go, marrying and giving in marriage. Um, well, there's a lot of controversy over this, and this is something I would never part company with, you know, a brethren on or whatever else, because I don't view it as a major doctrinal thing. But there's two ways basically to look at this thing. Sons of God are basically saved men. Sons of Seth, in other words, uh, is one of the ways that people say it, or sons of God are angels, Right. They were coming down and taking wives and essentially getting married and producing offspring. And that's the, the stand that I hold. In the Old Testament, sons of God is always a reference to angels. Always. New Testament, it switches. All right. Go to First John, it talks about now are ye the sons of God. It doesn't say, you know, hey, um, the sons of God, you know, saved people have always been the sons of God. No, it's, it's a, there's a disclaimer there. Now 
are ye the sons of God? Okay, I think it's First John chapter 3, if I remember correctly. You can look it up. It's in First John. I'm not going to go there for sake of time. But you go to Job, and you'll see the sons of God there, and they're appearing before the Lord. And Satan comes in among them. So you're talking about angels. And, it, and then it talks about later on in the book of Job. Um, and I do have a study on this, so you can get into more, you know, angels, what are they, is what the study is called. So I'm not going to cover it here. But you go to later on in the book of Job, and the sons of God are singing, they're shouting for joy when the earth is being created. Well, then they're not the sons of Seth. Okay. Um, so it's a very important distinction there. Again, it's important because it's what the Bible says, but I'm not going to break company with somebody if they disagree with me. Okay. But we'll talk about this as we continue. Um, Verse three, and the Lord said, my spirit shall not always strive with man for that. He also is flesh, yet his days shall be in 120 years. And, you know, this is a pretty big thing because, you know, back then before the flood, they were living over 900 years on average. Methuselah lived uh, 969 years. I think Adam lived 930. So they were living well over 900 years. And the Lord says, I'm going to cut it down to 120. That's a pretty big, you know, cut. <laughs> And the amount of time that you live, I mean, a lot compared to most people today, the average age today. But uh, they were living in a much pure world back then. But look at verse four. There were giants in the earth in those days and also after that. So there's after the flood, there's still giants. Okay. And again, I'm not going to get into a big thing on that. There's people that claim that the giants are still around and they're being covered up by the military and whatever else. No idea. But you see Goliath, he was one of these giants. How did they come about? When the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became, became mighty men, which were of old, men of renown. Well, if you're some guy that's, you know, eight, nine, ten foot tall and, and weighs, you know, five, six hundred pounds or something, and, uh, and you can pick up big things, you mean read the description of Goliath, pretty impressive. You'd become a mighty man, a man of renown, definitely. Um, so you're having uh, this, the sons of God, and they're producing, you know, children that are giants. Now, if they're just sons of, of God in terms of, you know, the sons of Seth or whatever, how are they producing giants? That doesn't make any sense. That's why, again, I believe it's angels coming in unto the daughters of men. You say, what's this mean? Let's continue. Verse 5. And God saw that the wickedness of man was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was only evil continually. Perversion, namely sex perversion, is an evil thing in God's sight. And you have sodomy. Sex perversion always gets worse. When you accept certain sexual perversions, then it goes to this one. And then it goes and it gets worse and it gets worse and it gets worse. You know, sodomy. Now that's accepted by people. Now they're saying, well, you know, there's some people that are they struggle with, you know, being attracted to children, adults being attracted to children. Oh, you mean pedophiles? Well, you know, we don't really want to use the term pedophile. And, and you know, there's all this gender neutral and all this other stuff. It's getting worse. That's the nature of perversion. And you and I know if angels made themselves known and said, hey, I'd like to marry a woman or whatever else. You know, women would be lined up for it. I mean, they've already made movies in Hollywood about it. You know, I, again, I did my study on the angels. What are they? And I played a, a clip of uh, Meg Ryan and, and Nicolas Cage, I think, were in this movie called The City of Angels years ago. And they were promoting angels and women mating. You know, and and uh, I forget what the exact line, but I, I played it in my sermon from many, many years ago. And. Meg Ryan, the character, she says, I wouldn't want to worship a God that would say that this is wrong or something like that. You know, and this and this angel, uh, he had to give up his angelic state to be able to come in and marry this, you know, woman, this mortal woman or whatever else. Um, well, that's what the Bible says. They left their first estate. So um, we're getting close to that type of a thing happening again. But the the whole thing is. God looks at it and he says it's wickedness. And you study the book of Leviticus where they're going in, the children of Israel are going in and just, and the Lord's saying, kill everybody, wipe them all out in that country. It's because of sex perversion. 
sex perversion will destroy somebody's mind. It's a horrible, terrible thing. Um, God did not design those things. It's not, oh, it's an alternative lifestyle. No, it isn't. No, it is not. But there's a second thing that uh, the Lord did not like back then. Let's keep reading. Genesis chapter 6, verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth, and it grieved him at his heart. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repenteth me that I have made them. But Noah found grace in the eyes of the Lord. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a just man and perfect in his generations, and Noah walked with God. And Noah begat three sons, Shem, Ham, and Japheth. Okay, so there are still righteous people in the midst of how bad the world is and whatever else. Back then, it was Noah and his family. Not very many people. Do you ever feel like that? Do you ever feel like, boy, I don't think there's many other people around that are, that are saved and born again? Yeah, it's frustrating. I mean, you, you meet somebody and I'm a Christian and you think, oh, finally, I met another one. And you get to talking to him and you realize, oh, no. I don't think that they're a Christian. Oh, great. You know, they don't believe in the, the King James Bible being perfect. They they aren't. They don't take a stand on this. And they don't take a stand on that. And Oh, man. We've all gone through that. Um, but look at verse 11. Genesis 6, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before God, and the earth was filled with violence. You know, perversion leads to violence. Because it's an unnatural affection. Hey, um, if you have a wife and children, if you're a man, uh, you don't want to be violent. You don't want to pick fights. You don't want to get out there and make trouble because hey, I, I got a wife and children at home. I don't want to think about this bad stuff. I'm not going to pick fights with anybody. You're a woman and you have some children to think about, and whatever else. Hey, I, I don't want to. I don't want to get into fights and whatever. But you get somebody and they're just going out there and just whatever thrill, whatever, you know, I'll do what it, if it feels good, do it. Hey, they can become very violent and they do. Verse 12, and God looked upon the earth and behold, it was corrupt for all flesh had corrupted his way upon the earth. Um, now, let's go into positive uh, Christianity mode. Oh, I think God has a great plan for this world. And I think God, God's not done with America yet. And, you know, all of us can see how it, how it goes. You get these guys that say that stuff, they're lying to you because they're after your money. Um, and, you know, it's, it's rough being a preacher because, you know, people want to hear good news and you want to give them good news. But the scriptures are plain. It's going to get worse. You go to the New Testament Evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. The time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And they, in the last days, perilous times shall come. On and on and on. Um, the, very, the Bible is a very negative book towards man. Very positive towards the Lord Jesus Christ. But man, this is rough on the, you know humanity, as people would call it. I don't really say human very much because you know, it's not a Bible word. But you know, on mankind, this, this book is rough. There's none good. They're all going out of the way. You know, it's just. Bah, bah, bah. Yeah. Um, so what's the future? Good or bad? Bad. Unless we can get Donald Trump reelected, then it'll be good. Uh, no. Uh, well, maybe Joe Biden will make things, but no. Um, your election's coming up in whatever country that you're in. Um, we're going to we're going to vote in the right people and then we'll restore the republic. We'll bring back, you know, the freedom. And, and, and no, we won't. No, we won't. So how do we react? How do we what do we do in this time? That's what this study's about. But I just I need to I need to go over some of this stuff because the prophecy of Jesus Christ is it's going to be like the days of Noah. Before he comes back. So what are the two big things of. The days of Noah, sex perversion and violence. That's what's going to happen. And as we go through this study, we're, you know, we'll talk a little bit more about this. But if you're seeing anything at all with the news, I know I've seen some of you in the, in, from other countries saying you're standing back and just watching America destroy itself. Exactly. Um, 
no country can get away with what America's gotten away with. I mean, even even if you are the most raging atheist, don't believe the Bible for one second, whatever else, just pure secular economics. Um, when you have a country that's spending trillions and trillions of dollars, unemployment, uh, jobless claims were coming in at over 1 million jobless claims every week for 21 weeks without end. That's not a good thing. Okay. Um, people are in forbearance because they can't even afford to, to pay their mortgage or their rent. Uh, the government has to print money to keep people from starving and they, they give the money to the people and the people go out and buy ATVs and, and sports cars and big screen TVs. You know, this nation is going to collapse and soon, very soon. What do we do as Christians? Well, I just think, Brother Brian, that the Lord's going to work it all out. I think it's going to come out good. Then I'm, this sermon's for you. You have to realize reality. I have to realize reality. Um, I did a long time ago. So I was preaching about this stuff in 2010 as a single man. Two years before I even met my wife. Over two years before I met. Well, I shouldn't say over two years. Uh because I met her in late 2011, so technically, you know, uh, two years, you know, before we got married, thereabouts. But I've been preaching this for a while. I've seen the handwriting on the wall for a long time. I've not been deceived into thinking that we can bring this country back. So, and I put a lot of things into practice. That, like I said at the beginning of this, you know, live stream thing here, I put a lot of things into practice that uh, got me made fun of. You know, people made fun of me because of the stuff I've done over the years. But I've been doing these things so that I can tell other people about them. So, well, let's continue. Next, we're going to go to Isaiah, the book of Isaiah. If you're newly saved. You can go back towards the New Testament. And uh, you'll see Psalms and then Proverbs and Song of Solomon and Ecclesiastes. Get my order mixed up here because I'm thinking about other things, but Isaiah, more kind of towards the middle of your Bible. If you're newly saved, you can see it's about the middle of my Bible here. Of course, this is, has commentary, so that's not really fair. Um, that kind of messes up the order of it. But the book of Isaiah, chapter 13, we're going to go th over some examples of what happens when a nation falls apart and what the Lord allows on the people. Um, God will never persecute you if you are righteous. God won't judge you. But God will allow bad things to happen to your country if it gets wicked. And you might have to go through some of that stuff. Isaiah 13 and verse 6. Howl ye, for the day of the Lord is at hand. It shall come as a destruction from the Almighty. Day of the Lord begins with the second coming there in the, that time period. It's a bad time. Therefore shall all hands be faint, and every man's heart shall melt, and they shall be afraid. Pangs and sorrows shall take hold of them. They shall be in pain as a woman that travaileth. They shall be amazed one at another. Their faces shall be as flames. Behold, the day of the Lord cometh cruel, both with wrath and fierce anger, to lay the land desolate. And he shall destroy the sinners thereof out of it. Do we have sinners around today? Oh, yeah, absolutely. Verse 10. Um, For the stars of heaven and the constellations thereof shall not give their light. The sun shall be darkened in his going forth, and the moon shall not cause her light to shine. You can compare that to Matthew chapter 24. You'll see it there. Verse 11, and I will punish the world for their evil and the wicked for their iniquity. And I will cause the arrogancy of the proud to cease and will lay low the haughtiness of the terrible. It just, it amazes me. America goes through some kind of judgment of the Lord and, and they say, we're America strong. We're proud to be Americans. And I'm thinking, oh man, do not say that. Power of pride. I remember after 9-11, people, bumper magnets or bumper stickers, power of pride. And I used to think, what does that mean? It doesn't mean anything. I'm, I'm a proud person. Oh, okay. It's ridiculous. 
Verse 12, I will make a man more precious than fine gold, even a man than the golden wedge of Ophir. Uh, another way to say that is your gold's going to be useless in the future. I, I, I love listening to some of the economists out there. I learned a lot from them, but they just go back to gold and silver. Gold and silver, that's the safe haven. No, it's not. Go to the book of James, and the, the rich men are weeping and ha howling and, and things because their gold and silver is worthless. Digital currency, they can they can eliminate the value of, of gold and silver. I mean, if you've been following the gold and silver market, it's been manipulated for years. But all of a sudden, the manipulation will stop in the future when they have digital currency. You know, cryptocurrencies and things. Yeah, right. No, it won't. Uh, gold and silver is not a safe haven for your money. Not at all. Um, verse 13. Therefore, I will shake the heavens and the earth shall remove out of her place in the wrath of the Lord of hosts and in the day of his fierce anger and shall be as a chaste roe and as a sheep that no man taketh up. They shall every man turn to his own people and flee every one into his own land. Every one that is found shall be thrust through and every one that is joined unto them shall fall by the sword. Thrust through? Killed? In the streets, in other words? Their children also shall be dashed to pieces before their eyes. Their houses shall be spoiled and their wives ravished. Berlin, after World War II. Russian soldiers came in and they raped every woman they could find. Were they all lost women that got raped? Ravished is your Bible word? Or were, were there some saved women that went through it? The Lord's writing about his people, Israel. Rough, verse 17. Behold, I will stir up the Medes against them, which shall not regard silver, and as for gold, they shall not delight in it. Oh, you have silver and gold? I don't care. What does that mean? I want your other things that you have. Verse 18. Their bows also shall dash, dash the young men to pieces, and they shall have no pity on the fruit of the womb. Their eye shall not spare children. Look at what the uh, uh, oh, Ustashi did in... Uh, Croatia and Yugoslavia during World War II. Just horrible. Just terrible stuff that they were doing to, to women and children and just it's bad. Taking Orthodox Serbian people and cutting their heads off with cross cut saws. Oh, look at the head we got here. Catholic, Ustashi. Um, just doing stuff like you can't even fathom. I did a the Vatican's Holocaust by Avra Manhattan. I did a book review on my secondary channel. Unreal. You say, well, yeah, but brother Brian, things have changed. Um, that was in the 1940s. Less than 100 years ago. Oh, but it, it won't happen here. Verse 19, in Babylon, the glory of, of kingdoms, the beauty of the Chal Chaldees' excellency shall be as when God overthrew Sodom and Gomorrah. It shall never be inhabited, neither shall it be dwelt in from generation to generation, neither shall the Arabian pitch tent there, neither shall the shepherds make their fold there. The wild beasts of the desert shall lie there, and their houses shall be full of doleful creatures, and owls shall dwell there, and satyrs shall dance there. And the wild beasts of the islands shall cry in their desolate houses and dragons in their pleasant palaces, and her time is near to come, and her days shall not be prolonged. Um, I've already seen it here. In northern Maine, um, the economy is already shot here. Uh, there's people that are just abandoning their houses right and left. And that's what I was talking about. You have a lot of houses and a lot of places in, in America. Um, when this fighting and this war comes to this country, there's going to be a lot of abandoned places. It's going to be rough. I mean, um, and you say, well, so we're just going to go over a bunch of bad things? No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to warn you about what's coming. I'm going to try to tell you how to prepare for what's coming and give you some solutions at the end of this study um, because it's very important. Next, let's go to Jeremiah chapter 19, the next book, Jeremiah. I just, I need to destroy the myth of just everything is good and everything's wonderful. If you're going to some church where they're telling you that, um, Excuse me, if they're telling you that, they're lying. 
uh, things are not getting better. Jeremiah chapter 19, verses 1 through 15. Thus saith the Lord, Go and get a potter's earthen bottle, and take of the ancients of the people, and of the ancients of the priests, and go forth unto the valley of the son of Hinnom, which is by the entry of the east gate, and proclaim there the words that I shall tell thee. And say, Hear ye the word of the Lord, O kings of Judah, and inhabitants of Jerusalem. Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, Behold, I will bring evil upon this place, the which uh, whosoever heareth, his ears shall tingle. Because they have forsaken me and have estranged this place and have burned incense in it unto other gods, whom neither they they nor their fathers have known, nor the kings of Judah, and have filled the, this place with the blood of innocence. Uh, hello, America. Hello, world. Um, oh, I, I, I'm pregnant. Oh, yeah, I don't want this. I'm just, is there somebody that could just come here and cut this baby out of me? Tens of millions. I don't even know what the number's up to by now. You know, they say 50 million or something. It's more than that. I have no idea. Innocent blood has been shed. Horrible, terrible things just getting worse and worse and worse. Verse 5. They have built also the high places of Baal to burn their sons with fire for burnt offerings unto Baal, which I commanded not, nor spake it, neither came it un into my mind. If you don't think satanic ritual type of stuff is going on in this country, I'm sorry to tell you, you are very ignorant. Um, there's all kinds of satanic ritual stuff, and a lot of times it's protected by the federal government. A good example would be the Finders case in Washington, D.C. Um, many years ago, I think back in the 1980s, at some point in time, Tallahassee Police Department in Florida found a van with two men in it and a bunch of little children. They found papers that tied it back to an abandoned warehouse in Washington, D.C., contacted the Metropolitan Police Department in Washington, D.C. They went and raided the, the warehouse, and they found just all kinds of of catalogs of pictures of children and they found snuff films which is basically a child being molested and then killed sorry but that's what it is they found film rooms where these rooms were you know being done or whatever else and in the midst of the investigation the cia stepped in and stopped it and said we'll take over from here sorry police get out of here i have the police records i have them. uh lord's given me a lot of interesting documentation over the years and it's there. It's real. A lot of these politicians, they're doing things that are just so horrible. If you saw what the, the politicians are doing, it'd turn your hair white. You know, I've seen some of it. So that's, you know, <laughs> explain some of this down here. Uh, the Pizzagate thing. Um, a lot of this stuff, child molestation, child trafficking, uh, ritual sacrifice. I, again, you know, there was a when I was in Lancaster County, there was actually a little ad, a little article in the newspaper down there, Lancaster New Era. And my, my friend showed it to me and they, they found a nun, the body of a nun at a local convent down there in Pennsylvania. And she had been through satanic, a satanic ritual, a ritual sacrifice. And it was just kind of a little article. OK, on to the other news. You know, it goes on a lot. In America, a lot more than you realize. <clears throat> God knows about it. Um, I'd be real careful when you hear that God bless America. I would be real careful. I would never say that. Never. Verse 6, Therefore, behold, the days come, saith the Lord, that this place shall no more be called Tophet, nor the valley of the son of Hinnom, but the valley of slaughter. Is there civil war coming to America? Yes. Um, when people can't buy food anymore, yeah, it's going to get real bad. It's going to get real bad. Verse 7, And I will make void the council of Judah and Jerusalem in this, in this place, and I will cause them to fall by the sword before their enemies and by the hands of them that seek their lives, and their carcasses will I give to be meat for the fowls of the heaven and for the beasts of the earth. And I will make this city desolate and in hissing. Everyone that passeth thereby shall be astonished, astonished and hiss before a because of all the plagues there out. Did you see what happened to Portland? Man. Hissing. Man, did you see that? Hissing. And how, how much of that are we seeing right now? Look at the downtown. Just, this city here has just been this 
Antifa, Black Lives Matter stuff and all the riots and whatever else. And he's, wow, that is bad. Brethren, it hasn't even begun yet. Okay. It's going to get a lot worse. And here's the worst part about this. Almost no preachers are even talking about this stuff. They're not warning their people. It's just, you know, good to be in the house of God this morning. Amen. You know, going to be looking for Trump to, to win the election. Amen. Are you kidding? What about the warning? What about this stuff here? Well, I don't want to ruin people's Sunday afternoon. I mean, you know, hey, it's you know, pretty, pretty bad. Verse nine. Here we take the rough, uh, the rough reality to a whole new level. What can happen? Jeremiah chapter 19, verse 9. And I will cause them to eat the flesh of their sons and the flesh of their daughters, and they shall eat every one the flesh of his friend in the siege and straightness, wherewith their enemies and they that seek their lives shall straighten them. God wouldn't allow a thing that God allowed it. So we, I, I can't imagine being that way. Okay, uh, go without food for a couple weeks and see how you do. There's no food. You're starving. You're losing your mind. But God, God's just going to, you know, he's going to overlook our, our problems. And, and, you know, we have such a light attitude towards our sin. Well, you know, okay, I'm struggling with this. I'm struggling with that. But, you know, God's okay with it. Knowing, therefore, the terror of the Lord. Right to a Christian. We'll get into some of that stuff here in a little bit. God allowed cannibalism among his own people because they put up with sin. They didn't judge sin. And quite frankly, there were bad things coming and they didn't get out of there. Which we'll talk about as we continue. Verse 10. Then shalt thou break the bottle in the sight of the men that go with thee. And shall say unto them, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, Even so will I break this people and this city as one breaketh a potter's vessel that cannot be made whole again. And they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury. What's going to happen to these cities? Things fall apart. Grid down scenarios and all this other stuff. What's going to happen to New York City after things fall apart? Look what's already happening to New York City. If you've been following the news at all, and, and you know, I'm not saying to watch television, but what I'm saying is just reading articles and whatever you want to do. Look, you know, just the talk that's going on. People are leaving Manhattan. The big money's pulling out of New York. They're leaving. People are fleeing the city. That's smart. It's a smart thing to do. You better get out of New York City if you're still there. You better get out of whatever city you are in if you're still there. It's going to be bad. Why? It's going to get so bad, they shall bury them in Tophet till there be no place to bury. Where are they going to bury all these dead bodies that are going to come in the future? No food. Hey, coronavirus is bad. It's so bad. We can't even have the uh, meat processing factories open. Oh, uh, hey, don't worry about it because, you know, if things fall apart. We have civil war. Don't worry because those trucks are still going to be there getting the food to the grocery store. Rough times are coming, brethren. You say, well, th this is just bad news. And well, it's bad news, but you can get ready for it. There are some things that you can do. Let's continue. Verse 12. Thus will I do unto this place, saith the Lord, unto the inhabitants thereof, and even make this city as Tophet. And the houses of Jerusalem and the houses of the kings of Judah shall be defiled as the place of Tophet, because of all the houses upon whose roofs they have burned incense unto all the host of heaven, and have poured out drink offerings unto other gods. Then came Jeremiah from Tophet, whither the Lord had sent him to prophesy. And he stood in the court of the Lord's house and said to all the people, Thus saith the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel, behold, I will bring upon this city and upon all her towns all the evil that I have pronounced against it, because they have hardened their necks that they might not hear my words. That's exactly what people are doing right now. People harden their hearts, they harden their neck. I don't want to look at this stuff. I don't want to think about this stuff. I, 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 let's just change the subject. Okay, this is really getting me down and whatever. Um, 
part of when the Lord convicts you of sin, part of when the Lord says, hey, you know what? This is wrong. Stop doing it. Is he's trying to turn you in a different direction. All we like sheep have gone astray. We're sheep. You get it? Sheep are stupid. Face it. Look at yourself in the mirror. Look at yourself as God sees you. Sheep are stupid. I have scars on my body because I'm stupid. And God tried to warn me about things and say, son, please don't stop doing that. Don't turn. And finally, he just had to turn. You're going in the wrong direction. That's part of what this study is about, brethren. Bad times are almost here. I've been warning about it since 2010. Trying to turn you. Trying to say, hey, I'm trying to warn you people. And I get made fun of. Not all of you. I, I get it. Friends in the Lord. and I love you in the Lord and everything. But I get a lot of the people out there, including people I used to respect and whatever, they make fun of me. They laugh at me. Then there's a joke. I'm trying to warn you. You better take heed. You better listen. Lamentations. Go over to the next book. Lamentations. Lamentations chapter 1. I'm going to read the first three verses. Jeremiah Lamentations. It's the Lamentations of Jeremiah. We could read the whole book, believe me. It's quite revealing when you compare it to today. Lamentations chapter 1, verse 1. How doth the city sit solitary that was full of people? How has she become as a widow? She that was great among the nations and princess, princess of, among the provinces, how has she become tributary? She weepeth sore in the night, and her tears are on her cheeks among all her lovers, she hath none to comfort her. All her friends have dealt treacherously with her. They are become her enemies. Judah is gone into captivity because of affliction and because of great servitude. She dwelleth among the heathen. She findeth no rest. All her persecutors overtook her between the straits. You know, it's a real bad thing that America owes so much money. China has taken all of our industry. There's almost no businesses in America anymore. And I said it way back in my sermon. You can listen to it. And I said, you know, there, there's no industry. The thing that got America out of the first Great Depression was the war industry. Put people to work. Hey, go on and you, you're, you can't make it out in the country. You know, when people were in the country and they had farms, and they were growing most of their own foods and they couldn't make it. Does that scary a little bit? How much food do you grow? Could you sustain yourself without grocery stores? That's frightening. Scary for me. Even where we're at and everything else. It's scary. That's a scary thought. But people left the country where the food was and went to the city to work in the factories. Just so they could have some money with the first Great Depression. Where are the factories at? They're not there. I mean, we are on a tipping point here, brethren. It's going to get rough. You say, well... But we got you, Brian, because uh, being dispensational, I, I, I'm surprised that you would go back to the Old Testament for all these examples and everything and all the bad times are coming and doom and gloom and everything else. Okay, then let's go to the New Testament. Okay. First, we're going to go to the book of Hebrews. Then we'll get into the Pauline epistles. After that, there's a couple of things we want to read in the book of Hebrews. But uh, Hebrews chapter 11. Go to the New Testament, to the book of Hebrews. You say, well, that, that bad stuff just happened back in the past. It's not going to, there's no future fulfillment. There's no, we're in a V-shaped recovery. We're coming back. Things are getting better. We're going to have more jobs in the future than we know what to do with them. Let's look about that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 32. And what shall I more say? And this is referring back to Old Testament times. So, but we'll see about this. And what shall I more say? For the time would fail me to tell of Gideon and of Barak and of Samson and of Jephthah, of David also and Samuel and of the prophets, who through faith subdued kingdoms, wrought righteousness, obtained promises, stopped the mouths of lions, 
quench the violence of fire, escape the edge of the sword, out of uh, weakness were made strong, waxed valiant, and fight, turned to fight to fight the armies of the aliens. Doesn't mean they were fighting people from Mars, okay? Let me just say that. If you're newly saved, you don't get that. Aliens just means people from other countries coming in, illegal aliens type of thing. Verse 35, women received their dead, raised to life again. You say, oh, that stuff sounds good, though, Brother Brian. Keep reading. And others were tortured, not accepting deliverance, that they might obtain a better resurrection. Think about that one. And others had trial of cruel mockings and scourgings, yea, moreover, of bonds and imprisonment. They were stoned. That's what I'm reading to here. They were stoned. They were sawn asunder, were tempted, were slain with the sword. They wandered about in sheepskins and goatskins, being destitute, afflicted, tormented, of whom the world was not worthy. They wandered in deserts and in mountains and in dens and caves of the earth. And these all having obtained a good report through faith, Receive not the promise, God having provided some better thing for us, that they without us should not be made perfect. They didn't even have the salvation that's available today through Jesus Christ. And I believe the book of Hebrews is written to a Jew in the time of Jacob's trouble. They don't even have it as good as we have it right now, but they'll still have the promise of Jesus Christ. They'll still have the promise. Hey, you only have to go through seven years of this. All right. But what about us? How many years do we have to go yet before the Lord says, come up hither? What about Christians back through church history? Something really to think about. Revelation chapter 1. Go over there to the book of Revelation. We'll be coming back here to Hebrews chapter 11. But Revelation chapter 1. Because see, Hebrews is, it's that passage there in the later part of chapter 11. It's talking about what was going on in the Old Testament. But now let's bring it into what's going on here in the first century and what's coming for us. Revelation chapter one, verse nine. I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. Uh, they used to put people on islands and just drop them off and say, there you go. You're there in, in isolation. Ironically, one of you asked for prayer about being in isolation in a health care center. Um, is that going to be the condition for a lot of people that are saved, a lot of Christians, the body of Christ, church of the living God? Um, how bad is it going to get before the Lord says, come up hither? I knew a brother uh, many years ago, back when we actually had our uh, house church, Bible Believers Fellowship back there in 2010, right around the time I did that study, um, and he was a graduate, one of the early graduates of PBI. He was an older man, I'd say in his 60s. And uh, he told me the one time, he said, I believe the New Testament's going to be, for the church age, he said, I think it's going to be a circle. We started out being persecuted and hunted down and having to flee and whatever else. And he said, I think it's going to be just that same way before the rapture happens. Is he right? I don't know. I have no idea. But it's looking that way. Let's go back to Hebrews chapter 11. And we're going to get into the Pauline epistles here in a couple minutes. So hang on for that. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. And you're going to see this thing. It's all tying into the, the subject of faith. Uh, faith is a big part of this. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. Um, when is the Lord coming back? When's the rapture going to happen? Do you know? No. Can I tell you? No. I don't know. Do you have faith it's going to happen? Yes. That's our hope. The blessed hope the Bible calls the catching up of the body of Christ. That's our hope. Jesus Christ is our only hope. Um, as we know, it's not going to work out in this world. But you have to live by faith. And I'll tell you right now, as time goes on, you're going to have to live a lot more by faith. You might not be able to go to the grocery store. You might not be able to go back to your job. They might start pulling off things. The face mask thing is, is just preparatory for what's coming next. 
are you ready to have have them turn you away because you're not vaccinated? Are you ready for that? Are you ready to be declared an enemy of the state? It's coming. It's going to happen. It's happened in the past. It's going to happen in the future. Are you ready? Verse 2. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. By faith Abel offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it he being dead yet speaketh. By faith Enoch was translated that he should not see death, and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation he had this testimony that he pleased God. Um, that will be the case for those who get called up. We which are alive and remain shall be called up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. First Thessalonians chapter four talks about that. We will be called up if you if you please God with your life. And how do you please God? If you're just turning a blind eye to what's going on in the world and you're just saying, you know what, I don't want to get negative. I don't want to, you know, hear about this stuff. It's just, you know, it, it ruins my day or something. It's not pleasing God. And, you know, don't go the other direction either where you're just miserable and, you know, just always complaining and griping and just living in fear and, and whatever. That's not good either. OK, then I'm not I'm not saying to do that. Please don't understand or don't misunderstand me here. There are solutions, ways that you can prepare. Right. If you're driving down the road and somebody pulls out in front of you, you don't just say, oh, this is unfortunate. Well, I don't want to think about this. I'm just going to keep going normal speed. No, you hit the brakes. You swerve, you see? Well, there's a bad thing happening in the future here. We're about ready to have a crash. I'll say that again. We're about ready to have a crash. You better hit the brakes. You better start to swerve. And we'll talk about it. Um, verse 6, but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. You're going to have to diligently seek the Lord. All right. I mean, you're going to we're going to talk about this as we get in through this study. There are some things you really need to seriously consider now. OK, now time is running out for you to make the right decisions to start to escape some of this violence and this bad stuff that's coming to start to think about solutions of ways to get away from forced vaccination and whatever else we're going to talk about. It. And you're going to have to live by faith. But look at verse seven, Hebrews chapter 11, verse seven, by faith, Noah being warned of God of things not seen as yet moved with fear. Are you being warned of God of things not seen as yet? Is, is forced vaccination here? No. Is it coming? Operation Warp Speed. We got to get these vaccines out there. Russia announces, Putin comes out and says, hey, we got the vaccine. We're experimenting with it over here. They're pushing it forward. It's not here yet, but it's coming. What about the economy falling apart? Things not seen as yet. But Noah, he sees it. God's warning Noah, and Noah says, this is going to get bad. And the Lord says, yeah, you got a little fear there? This could be real bad. Okay, Lord, what do I do? Noah, being warned of God of things not seen as yet, moved with fear, prepared an ark to the saving of his house, by the which he condemned the world and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. Oh, boy, get a hold of that. Prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Okay, point number one. Um, hey, bad times are coming. Can you prepare an ark? Oh, well, there's this survival goodies. It's called the ark, you know, stuff. And Jim Baker sells survival buckets that float when they fall in the water. No, no, no. I'm not talking about that stuff. Okay, prepping and end time prepping stuff. There's all kinds of problems with that. Okay, you start storing up the MREs and all this other stuff. That stuff is so toxic. I mean, that's why it lasts for so long, because it, it's not really food. It's just preservatives. It's horrible for your health. Uh, a lot of that stuff is just terrible. Don't stockpile huge amounts of food. I mean, noodles, like pasta, beans, those are good. You can stockpile some of that. And I have that actually in my old study from way back. I'm pointing over this way because my 
I have my other monitor over here and I just still have the audio sermon up. I get into a lot of the solutions to prepare for the hard times, but you have to be careful what you stock up with food. And of course, if you have the gi most giant stockpile of food in the whole world that you could last for 20 years on your stockpile, it could still be taken from you. So there's more to it than just understanding, hey, I have all this food stocked up. There has to be an understanding of it. Can I get food out there from nature? Can I wild forage? Can I hunt? Can I fish? Start to grow a garden. Find local farms. You know, maybe barter with those local farmers. Hey, can I make you know saw and split a cord of firewood for you? Or can I do this? Or can I do that for you? Again, so much of this is going to depend on you being out of the country, away from the cities. And I've been preaching that thing for a long time. I'm not going to ever say somebody that's in the city is lost and going to hell or anything, but it's going to be real rough in the cities. And we've already seen some of that stuff. The cities are going to be desolate and whatever else. And you're seeing it again. It's, it's not even a matter of I have to prophesy this stuff and, and it's some kind of a receive the prophet. Just common sense. If you're an atheist watching this, if you're a witch watching this, if you're a Jesuit or, you know, the most vile, horrible understand what i'm saying is is provable by scientific means just look it up people leaving manhattan downtown 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 manhattan right now they're doing it they're leaving the cities people are leaving that's wise get out of the cities there's bad times coming chicago they had to lift the draw bridges up to stop the the violence from getting into certain other areas of the city it's bad more people are dying in chicago almost on a daily basis than they're dying in the wars that our military is fighting in. That's a big problem, All right? Are you preparing an ark to the saving of your family? Are you prepared for some bad times to come? You need to think about these things. But notice what happened when Noah had that ark. By the which he condemned the world. You know what happens when Christians leave these wicked cities? God can finally judge those cities. He doesn't have to say, well, my child's in there. So, uh, you know, okay, come on, get out of there. Get out of there. Hey, stupid sheep, get out of that bad spot. If you're still in those cities, God might have to whack you pretty hard to get you out of it. Oh, well, but brother Brian, I, I'm, I'm just so close to retirement and I, I'm, I'm just, man, I, I'm, I'm going to be have my house paid off. And we're going to, um, if you're in a populated area, uh, you might be forced to leave that place with the clothes on your back. Okay. I've been wondering about this for years. Oh, look at that thing. He's out there in the middle of nowhere. Oh, you know, this hermit living out in the tool shed out in the wood. Uh, yeah. I'm, I took my own advice years ago. And, uh, you know, I see this thing too. Boy, you, you know, I'd love to be off grid, but it's just, I don't have the money for it. Uh, and yet I see people, lost New Agers and other types of people on YouTube that sold everything that they had and they're living in a $1,500 U-Haul driving it around the country, making a living at craft fairs and whatever else. I mean, what, what do you think would happen to the body of Christ if, if everybody just said, you know what, I'm going to sell what I have. I'm going to live in my car. I'm going to live in a van. I mean, you don't have to be homeless or anything, but I'm saying... Sell what you have. Downsize. See, debt-free living is not, I'm going to make a lot of money at my job, and then I'll be able to be debt-free. Because I'll have all my stuff that I'm in debt right now for, I'll eventually own it when I pay my debts off. That's not debt-free living. Debt-free living is, my life does not work right now. Let me start over. Let me go back and, and push the restart button. That's what it is. And I can speak from experience. I had almost no money at all when I first got married. We were living, you know, my wife, when she first came in, into my life, we lived at my parents' place for a little while. It was terrible. Then we moved up. The, we had an offer to move in, you know, this little shack uh, up in northern, northwestern Pennsylvania. And it was uninsulated. I mean, there were mice running across the floor. The water would turn yellow after a few minutes of using it. The water was awful. You, you know, you couldn't wash white clothes there because they would turn yellow. I mean, it was, you couldn't drink the stuff. It was terrible. It smelled like sulfur. Um, a bat was flapping around on the drop ceiling the one night. I mean, it was a rough place to live. And we went through the winter, no insulation. It was cold, um, bad. And then, 
you know, we left there, a whole situation. I'm not going to get into it. And I had a wood shop that I had built at my parents' property. It was 16 foot by 16 foot. And we moved in there for a couple months. Throughout the summer, we lived in a 16 foot by 16 foot wood shop. Okay. Moved my wood tools out and, and moved in. 16 foot by 16 foot. Okay. Put the rest of our stuff in storage. Uh, then after that, we moved to northern Maine in January to a house with no heat and no running water. You say, why do you do all these crazy things? People have wondered that all these years. Why do you do all that crazy stuff? So I can tell you how to prepare for bad times. Prepare an ark for the saving of your house. You have a debt. You have a mortgage. You have rent. You have this. You have yet. Study it. Today, when this is over, start looking up some videos on how to live in a van, how to live in a whatever, how to live cheap, tiny house living, how to get just you don't get out of debt by by cutting off your credit cards and your debt. You, that stuff is there, but you just restart. You say, okay, I'm going to, I'm going to do a radical restart and say, okay, I'm going to return myself to a homeless position. I bet Noah had a nice house. What's he building an ark for? You're going to leave all your house and your real estate and everything behind? No, what are you doing? He probably had plenty of friends that came and said, no, you're going crazy. You build an, a, an ark. What would happen to you if you have a mortgaged house and all of a sudden you start to build a tiny home on wheels? Or you get an old U-Haul truck in there and whatever else, and you, they're gutting it out, and your neighbors are looking over saying, what's this guy doing? We got our ambulance right out here today, our old ambulance we bought, 1999 Ford ambulance. Um, paid a couple thousand bucks for it on eBay. Had to spend a lot to actually fix the thing up. It was in worse shape than I was led to believe, but whatever. And uh, we drove 4,000 miles in that a couple of years back and slept in it. And had running our, our water system in there. I shouldn't say running water, but had a little uh, composting toilet that uh, we built ourselves. There's ways to do it. We prepared an ark, you see. And if we times got real rough, we could still drive that thing around. Me and my wife and my son. We had a great time doing it. You're free when you're debt free. Prepare an ark. And if Christians would do that and get away from the cities, get out of those places, what would happen? It would condemn the world. It would judge the world. And, and the Lord could say, okay, now these cities are just vile and wicked. And all my saints have gone out of those places. They're out where I can keep them safe and provide for them with, uh, you know, wild edibles and, and wild caught fish and the uh, game that you can hunt and whatever else. And, Get, get a little bit of land or something, an acre or two of land and put a little garden on it or just go to farm stands and, and buy fresh produce. You see, I'm warning you. I've been warning people for years. Go back to 2010, warning people. And I've been living the life and you will be made fun of. People will say that you're crazy just like they did to Noah. And I can tell you, it gets better. That's the other thing. I mean, we went through some very, very rough times. And here we are now. Things are a lot better. So let's continue. Um, verse 7, the, the end part of it there, here's another part of it. You condemn the world when you leave that wicked system and became heir of the righteousness, which is by faith. You get out. And now all of a sudden, you can live a much better, more righteous life when you're away from the wickedness of the city. You get out on your own land someplace or out into the country somewhere. You're not going to hear the rock music or the, the horrible music and the, the lots of the profanity. You get out there, you're we're free. I saw an older woman that was living in a U-Haul in and, and, and one of the videos I watched. And, and she said, uh, she said, I bought a dog recently. And, and somebody said, why'd you buy a dog? And she said, because I can. No landlord, nobody there to say, uh, well, you know, we'll have to have you, you know, do a deposit. And I want a dog. I'll buy a dog. Do what I want. Can you do that where you're living? Something to think about. Verse eight, by faith, Abraham, when he was called to go into a place which he should after receive for an inheritance, obeyed and he went out not knowing whither he went. There's another aspect to this whole thing, brethren. Um, you know, where am I supposed to go? 
Well, guess what? We had to do that when we came here to Maine. I didn't know anybody up here. There wasn't anybody to come to and whatever else and stuff. We had to we had to make our own way here. And it's been rough at times. But you know what? It's better now. Not knowing whether he went. Verse 9, by faith he sojourned in the land of promise as in a strange country. Dwelling in tabernacles with Isaac and Jacob, the heirs with him of the same promise. For he looked for a city which hath foundations, whose builder and maker is God. Through faith also Sarah herself received strength to conceive seed and was delivered of a child when she was past age, because she judged him faithful who had promised. Therefore sprang there even as of one, and him as good as dead, so many as the stars of the sky in multitude, and as the sand which is by the sea, shore innumerable. These all died in faith, not having received the promises, but having seen them afar off and were persuaded of them, and embraced them and confessed that they were strangers and pilgrims on the earth. What happened? What what happened here? Body of Christ? Strangers and pilgrims on the earth? Son of man hath not where to lay his, you know, foxes have dens and things, but the son of man hath not where to lay his head. Paul, we have no certain dwelling place. But all of a sudden, here in the modern times, Christians have abandoned all that. And now how many times have we backed off from witnessing to people because we're worried about losing our job and then losing our home and then losing it? I speak this to your shame. I speak it to my shame. There have been many times where I've just kept my mouth shut because, well, I don't want to offend the wrong people. You know what happened? I believe it's in church buildings. The church buildings, buildings brought in this whole thing of, well, we don't want to look weird anymore. We don't want to be the ones out there in the fields worshiping and, you know, meeting out in the woods and whatever else. And so, hey, the Protestant Reformation happened. So why couldn't we build our church buildings still? Well, we don't have the money. Oh, yeah, like we can go to the bank, though. And all of a sudden you get debt. But you got to look like everybody else. We can't be strangers and, and pilgrims. In a country that we don't know. And we get comfortable. And we, we get complacent. Think about it. Verse 14. For they that say such things declare plainly that they seek a country. And truly if they had been mindful of that country from whence they came out. They might have had opportunity to have returned. But now they desire a better country that is in heavenly. Wherefore, God is not ashamed to be called their God, for he hath prepared for them a city. Isn't that something? God's not ashamed to be called their God. Because they're strangers and pilgrims. And they desire a better city. Ouch. Ouch. Uh, Lord, I have some things pretty good here, and I, I really don't want to leave and whatever else. Uh, um, what's the Lord's will? Uh, brethren, the Lord's going to shake some stuff up. He is. And uh, if you're in a city situation in a place like that, um, it might get pretty bad. You say, but you, Brother Brian, you still haven't gone to the Pauline epistles. Okay, let's let's fix that. Romans chapter 8. It's going to be a little bit longer study, so you know, we'll go as long as we have to. Here, if I have to go past the noon thing or whatever else, it's fine. Romans chapter 8, verse 35 through 39. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril or sword? You say, well, see, Brian, what are we even worried about? There's nothing there. Let's just ignore the people that died in the past and the, the you know, the wars and things that happened and, and, you know, having to run from the. Let's just ignore that. That's, just, you know, no, we've never been separated from the love of Christ. Is that what it's saying? No. How do you know? Keep reading. Verse 36, as it is written, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter. Written to a New Testament Christian. See, here's the point. Suffering will happen. Suffering will come. But the Lord will separate you from his love when you're going through it. The Lord loves you regardless. I mean, you can just ignore everything I'm warning, about, warning you about today. Everything I've warning, been warning people about for 10 years. Ten years ago, I did a study warning people, prepare for bad times. And I 
did that sermon because Peter Ruckman had preached a sermon about the coming economic stock market or coming stock market crash is what it was called. And he was talking about that, how the child of God should get prepared for it. Probably in, in the 1980s, he, he did that study. Preachers, the real ones, have been warning about this stuff for a long time and telling the American people, you better be careful, you better watch out. And other countries as well, you know. We're counted for, as sheep for the slaughter, brethren. Warning you. You ignore it. Well, God can still love you. You're still saved. Praise the Lord and whatever. But you're going to go through it. You're going to go through some rough stuff. And if you're a woman, you have no promise that you're not going to be raped. If you're a, a, a father and a mother, you might you have no promise that you're not going to see your children killed. You have to wake up to reality. Verse 37. Nay, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him that loved us. For I am persuaded that neither death, nor life, nor angels, nor principalities, nor powers, nor things present, nor things to come, nor height, nor depth, nor any other creature shall be able to separate us from the love of God, which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Pretty negative stuff. You won't be separated from the love of God. Um, understand that. But judgment has to come to this nation. And to say, well, you know, I, I just... I think we're praying for the rapture, brethren. We're just going to get up. We're going to go. We're going to leave. And praise God, we're not going to have anything bad happen. That's not historically accurate. Just as simple as that. Acts chapter 8. Go to the book of Acts chapter 8. See, I, I, I just don't understand why God would allow these things there, brother. I, I don't get it. There's a good purpose for it. Acts chapter 8, verse 3. As for Saul, he made havoc of the church, entering into every house and hailing men and women, committed them to prison. What if we go full circle and we come back to this? Brothers and sisters in the Lord going to prison. What about that? And what happened? Verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. This is not a fun thing for me to say, brethren, but uh, how much simpler it would be if you lost your job and your home and all you had was the word of God. Clothes on your back, maybe a vehicle to travel around in. Um, life would get real simple. I've been watching some videos of homeless people and things and just seeing how they react and whatever. Uh, how do you get by day to day? I don't know. Just try to eat. You mean having food and raiment, they can be content? And yet that's written to a Christian in 1 Timothy chapter 6. But boy, we have to have our stuff, don't we? You say, well, are you saying we have to give it up? No, I'm not saying you have to give it up. I'm saying you better prepare an ark to the saving of your house. There are ways to get out of the city. There are ways to get out of harm's way. Um, I haven't seen any riots up here. Aroostook County, right just north of us here, they've had one death from coronavirus. 33 reported cases. I just checked it last night. I think Penobscot County, where we're at right now, because um, we're, we're right near the border, um, I think they've had, you know, what, five or something like that deaths. Not worried about it. They have face masks required signs on a lot of the stores you go in. Nobody's even you know, wearing a face mask. It's a good area to be. There's good areas in Montana, good areas in Idaho, good areas in a lot of states. There are areas that are country areas where you can go to and it's going to be a lot better. You're going to have farms that you can deal with and whatever else. And um, you can you can get by pretty cheap. Uh, again, I get I get a little perturbed when I hear people saying, I wish I could live off grid, but I just can't. Uh, it's so expensive to live in the city. I can't even fathom how people can afford it. Uh, you can sell what you have and get rid of what you have and buy some kind of a cheap. I mean, just if you have retirement in the bank, retirement money in the bank, that stuff's going to be gone. Understand that you'd be a lot better off just buying some, you know, travel trailer or some kind of thing, camper, RV. What a big van, something like that, and, and live in the thing. 
prepare an ark to the saving of your house. I'm warning you. I've been warning people for 10 years. And some people are still have not listened to me. You're still messing around. Some of you have listened. And I thank the Lord for you. Because I know that there's a bunch of you out there that have taken in my advice and you have gotten away from the cities. I thank the Lord for you, for listening to me. Now let's go to Philippians chapter 4. A couple more places to turn to here, then we're done. Philippians chapter 4. Remember years ago, I was dealing with a brother and, and uh, brother Derek, one of the guys who was originally part of Bible Believers Fellowship. And um, we were talking about the thing of house churches. And, and I said, well, brother, I said, that's just, he said, why don't we were going to Liberty Baptist, you know, and I was a rising star at Liberty Baptist and doing great teaching of Sunday school and whatever else. And, and um, very much involved in my suit and tie and the whole thing. And right when King James Video Ministries was first getting started about 2007, before I came on YouTube. And uh, I remember we were talking about the subject of house churches and he said, I said about, you know, well, he said, why don't we just start a house church if it's what the Bible says? Nobody had church buildings. It was all people worshiping at home. Why don't we start it? And I said, well, brother, I said, I think it's because it's more of a when you get persecuted, then you can go to a house church. And he said, so we wait for the persecution to come to start doing right. Uh, I didn't know how to answer that. No, you start doing right now. You say, well, I gotta wait till the economy really falls apart to get out of the area where I'm at. Uh, I'm just gonna wait. I'm gonna wait. Um, brethren, they've already instituted stay-at-home orders. Well, I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna wait for the right time, then I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna bug out. I got a bug out bag, brother. I got this little backpack and it's got a little survival TP thing in it, and you know, I don't mean toilet paper, little little tent. You know, and toilet paper, too. And I have a little flashlight. And I have little glow sticks that break, and then they, they get shiny and things. And I have some MMREs that I have stuffed in there, and I have a little pocket knife. You're finished. You're not going to make it. Well, I'm just going to run out into the woods. I've, I've seen some survival, you know, shelter videos on YouTube or something. You're not going to make it. You're not going to make it. Plain and simple. I'm warning you. I have been. People still don't listen to me. Hey, uh, you, you really ought to quit using cell phones. Uh, they can give you cancer with the electric fields that they put off. And and you're being tracked. And whatever. Oh, down there, you're such a crazy nut. Oh, you're, you're so stupid and everything else. Oh, well, here's a, you know, scientist and a Dr. Devra Davis, I think her name was, doing a, a speech at a university in, in Australia. And she's talking about that this thing is definitely there and, and and you know it can cause cancer over an extended amount of time and it makes you sterile and whatever ah, yeah but you know you just keep what are you waiting for till you get cancer till the the government says you know we are requiring a tracking app in your cell phone now and then all of a sudden you're just going to walk away from it all <laughs> people philippians chapter 4 verses 10 through 13 but I rejoiced in the Lord greatly that now at the last your care of me hath flourished again, wherein ye were, were also careful, but ye lacked opportunity. Not that I speak in respect of want, for I have learned in whatsoever state I am therewith to be content. I know both how to be abased and I know how to abound. Everywhere and in all things I am instructed both to be full and to be hungry, both to abound and to suffer need. I can do all things through Christ which strengtheneth me. Can you be homeless? Can you walk away from the life that you're familiar with? Go into a strange country where you don't know anybody? Can you trust the Lord? Can you live by faith? Well, brother, I'm just going to wait. Wait till what? Till your city's burning down? Is that what you're going to wait till? Well, brother, I'm just going to wait till the, the, you know, rioters and protesters are kicking my door in. Then I think I'm going to leave. I'm going to grab my bug out bag and brother, I'm going to head out the back door and head for the hills. No, you're not. You're going to be a statistic. And um, when we get to the judgment seat of Christ, you can't point over at me and say, he never warned me, Lord. He just always did positive messages. He never warned me about any evil coming. He didn't tell me about these things. You're not going to pull it off on me. 
I've been warning people for years. I've been made fun of for years for what we do and how we live and everything else. I love you. A lot of you don't listen to me. Second Corinthians chapter six. Persecution, bad times are promised to you as a Christian. We just live in an artificial world of, of debt-based wealth, <laughs> artificial wealth. And so we look like we aren't being persecuted and things aren't that bad and whatever. And it's coming to an end soon. Second Corinthians chapter six, verse one. We then as workers together with him beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. But now is the accepted, behold, now is the accepted time, behold, now is the day of salvation. Giving no offense in anything, that the ministry be not blamed. But in all things, approving ourselves as the ministers of God, in patience, in afflictions. Bad stuff. In necessities, in distresses, in stripes, in imprisonments, in tumults, in labors, in watchings. In fastings, a little negative there. By pureness, by knowledge, by long suffering, by kindness, by the Holy Ghost, by love unfeigned, by the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand and on the left, by honor and dishonor, by evil report and good report, as deceivers and yet true, as unknown and yet well known, as dying and behold we live, as chastened and not killed, as sorrowful yet always rejoicing as poor yet making many rich, as having nothing and yet possessing all things. You're not promised a smooth ride as a Christian. You're not. But I'm an American Christian, Brother Brian. I, I, I'm supposed to have it good. Well, you are deceived. And your deception, the illusion is coming to an end. Turn back to the Old Testament in the book of Amos, one of the minor prophets. I had two more passages of scripture and then we're done. Amos chapter 5. Yeah, I wish everybody would have listened to me way back when. I wish those of you out there, while you're turning to the book of Amos, I'm just going to say some things here. I wish a lot of people would have taken my advice and gotten serious instead of believing in this, this false system and going out and buying the new house or get, you know mortgaged house or we like to call the new vehicles mortgages on wheels. I mean, fifty, sixty thousand dollars for a pickup truck, and up, even more than that. We bought our land, fifty-five thousand dollars. Just to be very honest, and it took me years and years and years to selling things and 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 struggling and scraping by, and we don't need this and we don't need that to get to that point. What were you doing with your money? What were you doing with your time? Were you preparing an ark to the saving of your house? Or were you wasting it? You uh, young people out there, young brother that asked for prayer to get away from the addiction of video games, um, you would do well to get away from it quickly. I have no time for video games. I used to make time, but now I look back at that and I think how much time I wasted. I'll never go back to video games again. I have no time for it. Good way to get rid of addictions of, of oh, I'm just having a hard time getting rid of these uh, um, television and, and, you know, this stuff and that stuff. Um, get off grid. Go live in your van for a while. Buy an old van and fix it up. Start working on it now. You better do it soon. Make sure that uh, you aren't going to, you know, bug out when the people are kicking your door in. Or when the soldiers are out in the street out there. Handing out the vaccines, going door to door. They're going to hit the big population centers first, brethren. That's where they're going. Amos chapter 5, verse 1. Hear ye this word which I take up against you. Even a lamentation, O house of Israel. Hear the words that I'm telling you right now. O house of America, England, Canada. Wherever you're at, the virgin of Israel is fallen. She shall no more rise. She is forsaken upon her land. There is none to raise her up. America's finished. America's not going to be raised up after what's coming. 
For thus saith the Lord God, the city that went out by a thousand shall leave an hundred, and that which went forth by an hundred shall leave ten to the house of Israel. A lot of people are going to die in the future. For thus saith the Lord unto the house of Israel, Seek ye me, and ye shall live. But seek not Bethel. Very interesting. Bethel is Beth-el, the house of God. And this is when they actually had physical synagogues, physical temples. And God's saying, seek not Bethel. Don't go there. Don't go to the church buildings. I'm telling you, I've been warning people again for years and years and years. You go to these church buildings, they're telling you to put masks on. They're, they're in debt. They're, they're drowning in debt. They're not going to preach against debt. Never. They're not going to tell you to prepare. Never going to do it. Verse 5, but seek not Bethel, nor enter into Gilgal, and pass not to Beersheba, for Gilgal shall surely go into captivity, and Bethel shall come to naught. How about that? If this work of this council be of God, it will come to naught. Book of Acts. How many of the churches have come to naught? Every single one of them. Verse 6, seek the Lord, and ye shall live. Lest he break out like fire in the house of Joseph and devour it, and there be none to quench it in Bethel. You know what's going to happen? All these churches with the nice deeds, and oh, we're going to have a food pantry, and we're going to have this, and we're going to have that, community suppers, and they're not going to quench the fire of God's wrath when it hits this country. They're not going to stop his judgment. Verse 7, ye who turn judgment to wormwood and leave off righteousness in the earth, seek him that maketh the seven stars in Orion, and turneth the shadow of death into the morning, and maketh the day dark with night, that calleth for the waters of the sea, and poureth them out upon the face of the earth. The Lord is his name, that strengtheneth the spoiled against the strong, so that the spoiled shall come against the fortress. They hate him that rebuketh in the gate, and they abhor him that speaketh uprightly. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> tell my enemies out there. For as much, therefore, as your treading is upon the poor, and ye take from him burdens of wheat. Ye have built houses of hewn stone, but ye shall not dwell in them. Ye have planted pleasant vineyards, but ye shall not drink wine of them. Oh, I've put, I've put all this money into retirement. I have all these investments. You're not going to enjoy it in the future. It's going to be gone. Verse 12. For I know your manifold transgressions and your mighty sins. They afflict the just, they take a bribe, and they turn aside the poor in the gate from their right. Therefore, key verse, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. Seek good and not evil, that ye may live. And so the Lord, the God of hosts, shall be with you, as ye have spoken. Hate the evil, and love the good, and establish judgment in the gate. It may, it may be that the Lord of God, or Lord God of hosts, will be gracious unto the remnant of Joseph. Wouldn't it be nice to have the Lord God be um, gracious to the remnant of the body of Christ that's here? In America. And let me just say this. If you're in Europe right now, you're in a better spot than here in America. You have a problem because you have big brothers far more advanced in, in the European countries. I mean, Sweden's almost ready to go cashless into a cashless society. But, you know, you know what I'm talking about if you're in Europe. Big brother is a lot more advanced over there. But you have a place in Bible prophecy in the future. OK, the European continent is not going to be destroyed. America, there is no America in Bible prophecy. I mean, we are sitting over here, us Americans, we are sitting on a ticking time bomb and also Canada. And you know it. You know it. The iniquity, the bad stuff, it's going to get rough. And, you know, if you're in the city, you know, if you're in a city in Europe, well, you might get by. America, Canada, you better get out. And don't wait. You better make it happen soon. But uh, the time is going to come, brethren, that uh, verse 13, therefore, the prudent shall keep silence in that time, for it is an evil time. I struggle with that a lot. Do I keep fighting against this system and, and keep judgment, God's judgment away from this nation? Or do I just say, you know what? I've warned people. We just keep They just keep attacking me, keep making fun of me and whatever else. And, and uh I've tried to warn people. I've tried to do my best to turn people against sin, to, to turn people to righteousness. Um, there's going to come a point in time when the Lord's just going to silence me. When the Lord's going to say, stop, stop talking about this. Stop preaching it. 
when is that time going to come? I don't know. When the Lord tells me, okay, that's enough. You've warned the people enough. And I'm going to keep silence in that time. You know, if I was a single guy and, and whatever else, maybe I'd be tempted to just say, okay, I'll just go out like a martyr and whatever. But I, the Lord gave me a wife and a son. And uh, unfortunately, I've sacrificed a lot of, of things to minister to the body of Christ. Um, my little boy doesn't know much about vacations because dad works all the time. And I've done that for the body of Christ. And just an answer to the thing of the off-grid seminar type of a deal that I'd put on YouTube, it's not going to happen. Some of you posted good comments, and I thank you for your input, but that's not happening. Um, it would take me a good week or two of work with filming. I already spent probably two weeks writing the notes out for the thing. So filming it and editing and putting everything together, and, and there's no pay. I can't keep doing that. I can't. I serve the Lord. I, I put out these videos and things, and, and that's great, preaching and teaching. But secular work, no, I can't do it. I'm, I'm not going to be able to do that. Um, would I bring it out on some kind of a thing that I could sell through King James Video Ministries? Well, that's a possibility. Uh, tell people about some of the ways to survive what's coming and, and things. And But I can't just keep putting stuff out for free and sacrificing, I mean, my wife and my son's future. I'm not doing it. That's why we're here. In this in a remote area that's why we came here we left the things that were familiar to us we came to be strangers in a foreign land not knowing anybody and we took the chances and we took the risks and everything else i've been through the the bad times of of basically almost being homeless i've gone through that um i've been there in a house trying to have water running you know a blue plastic jug and running water and, and things trying to you know use a, a brush on potatoes to get the dirt off the potatoes so we can cook breakfast. And it's 18 degrees in the kitchen, Fahrenheit. Um, and your hands are freezing. I've, I've gone through that stuff. Okay. Why? Because I saw bad times coming and I didn't want to be in the city. I had offers from brethren. Hey, you know, come down to our city here and we, you know, we can preach here and things that, you know, churches offered to me and whatever. No, not doing it. I don't want to be near the cities because I can see what's coming. I know what's, on the way. Try to warn people. Proverbs chapter 22. And um, it's up to the Lord. It's up to the Lord. Uh, we're going to end in Proverbs chapter 22. So you can turn there in your King James Bible. Um, Proverbs chapter 22. It's up to the Lord how long I'm in, in the ministry. Proverbs chapter 22, verse 3. A prudent man. A prudent man foresees the evil and hides himself. In the book of Amos. A prudent man foreseeth the evil. Oh, excuse me. A prudent man uh, will keep silence in that time. I'm thinking of this verse. A prudent man foreseeth the evil and hideth himself, but the simple pass on and are punished. Um, there's a a lot of land where we live and um it's not just our land there's we're surrounded by just a lot of land and we're right on the border of the allagash wilderness um there's a lot of area to hide ourselves up here a lot of ways to provide for ourselves um and maine is rough if you're not used to really cold winters we love the cold winters um we can't stand the high temperatures but i get to an area where there's a lot of area where you could hide yourself because if they start coming around to vaccinate people, you might have to hide. Okay. Again, we're waiting for the catching up of the body of Christ. And just a little advice here before we continue with this passage. Um, a lot of what we're doing, we have to fight the evil. But some of it is we might just have to pull back from the whole thing and just kind of hide and just keep lay low for a little while. And okay, they're requiring this at the store. And I can't go in there right now because I'm not going to wear a face mask or Whatever, I'll just have to take some time off from work because they're trying to do this. And hopefully you just pray like crazy. God, can you please get rid of this face mask thing? Um, you know, maybe I have to order some things online, get them brought to the house. Or, or maybe I can just go out and try to find some food. Or maybe we should learn about how to wild forage for food. Or maybe we could go fishing. Or See, just kind of hold off so you don't have to compromise and go with the world. Those are some solutions. 
Um, but let's continue here. Verse four, by humility and the fear of the Lord are riches and honor and life. Oh boy, humility. Um, you know, it's a very humbling experience to basically be homeless, to not have a real nice house, to live in a place that people make fun of. It's uh, humility, forces humility in you. But why? Uh, the fear of the Lord. Hey, uh, I don't want to be near the, the big cities with all the wickedness and all the vile filth and everything else. And I don't want to be with my relatives that are doing things that are contrary to what the word of God says. So I'm going to take steps to get away from that so I can be out and I can listen to hymns when I want to. And I can sing hymns when I want to. And I can do what the Lord wants me to do and tells me to do without having to compromise to stay with relatives. And what's it lead to? Riches and honor and life. And riches, by the way, biblical riches is not money. Biblical riches riches are physical assets. You look at Abraham, one of the richest men in the Bible, truly blessed of God. And he has got you know, cattle and all kinds of livestock and whatever else. And he had gold and silver and precious stones. Sure. But he had land. He had cattle. He had physical wealth. Physical assets. The Lord can bless you with those things. Um, honor and life. You know, it's an honorable thing when you get your own property and you can start to grow your own things and whatever else. There's honor there. You can look at that and say, yeah, I didn't get this from the store. I know where this came from. It's not genetically modified or sprayed with chemicals or whatever else. And you live a good life, but you have to get started. You have to get it done. Verse five, thorns and snares are in the way of the froward. He that doth keep his soul shall be far from them. Get some distance between you and the lost world. I'm recommending it. I've been recommending it for a long time and time is almost up. You know, in the past, you could have sold some things and just kind of taken your time and leisurely looked for some property in the country and whatever else. Brethren, the city that you live in is Sodom and Gomorrah, and you know it. Don't tell me, well, there's some good cities, and there's not really a lot of perversion and violence going on. Every city is filled with perversion and violence, and it's only going to get worse. Hey, Lot, why don't you come out of the city, Lot? Well, I got some business contacts here. My daughters are engaged to men, and... Uh, you better get out. The angels had to finally come and just say, okay, come on out. What did Lot lose when he left Sodom and Gomorrah? Everything. He escaped with the clothes on his back. He bugged out. He lost everything. He even lost his wife. She turned back. Verse, tw verse six. If you're a parent, you need to think about this. Train up a child in the way he should go, and when he is old, he will not depart from it. The rich ruleth over the poor. Here's where we end it. And the borrower is servant to the lender. I speak this to your shame, body of Christ. Most of you are borrowers. And you're servants to the banks. The banks that are failing right now. The banks that are being bought up by the Federal Reserve. Research it. Study it. It's bad. If you are in debt, you are a servant. If you're in a household that's in debt, you are a servant. What's going to happen? Could there be debtor prisons in the future? Could China be given this country? China take <clears throat> China take over America and form debtor prisons? I can't pay, pay my, mor my mortgage. I mean, they're already saying it. It's already there. You better take steps and you better take them now because time's almost up. The ax is going to fall. And I don't say it's going to be in the next year or two. I think it's going to be in the next couple of months. I mean, I saw the thing that Trump's trying to do this second stimulus bill thing and whatever else. And, and uh, we need to get people, you know, send people money for not working. Yeah, that's always worked. That's not a that's not a violation of scripture. You know, um, uh, if anyone would not work, neither should he eat. Um, but just keep we will force people to not go to their jobs and then we'll send them checks to stay at home. You know, uh, that's not good. Right. And he, and he came out with this and this Gavin Newsom, the Jesuit trained governor of California. He comes out and he says, we don't have seven hundred million dollars a week 
to give to people. We can't do this. Seven hundred million dollars a week. Just in California. What is that going to do to this nation? They're playing games right now with the future of the American people. And it's going to be decimation. It's going to be huge amounts of death. <laughs> I don't know what more to say. I really don't. This has not been a real fun message for me to say, but you know what? My solution for you, um, you're going to have to be homeless. Start out homeless. We'll just say a few, few solutions here. You're homeless. Okay? Just imagine yourself. You've lost everything. Right? Now, you're standing there. You have clothes on your back. Food and raiment. Let us be there with content. Right into a Christian. Okay? You start out there. Do you have a vehicle? Yes. Well, okay, then that's a little bit better than being homeless. Do you have a vehicle that's paid for, in other words? Do you have a tent? Do you have camping supplies? Do you have a way to make electricity? A little inverter that you can plug into your cigarette lighter there in your vehicle or whatever, your 12-volt socket thing. Can you do that? Is that better than being just on the street with the clothes on your back? Yes, it is. Have a vehicle that's paid for, if you can do that. Um... And you start moving up from there. Do you have a way to get food? Can you flee to some area? Do you have enough money to be able to get to some area where you can have the, you know, be able to buy land or get out to the country someplace? Can you get out of the, the bad situation where you're at? Um, these are things that you have to think about. And you have to think about them soon. All right, if you are in a city area and, and whatever else, um, you better run. Because if you don't, it's going to get real bad. And, you know, you might be one of the ones that gets, you know, murdered, killed by the edge of the sword. Um, for thy sake, we are killed all the day long. We are counted as sheep for the slaughter, written to Christians. Uh, I'm warning you. I'm giving you that one last warning. People, if you've been watching me for a while, you could have you could have heard the warnings 10 years ago. You could hear my my. You know, just watching my life and seeing what we go through with the off grid thing and whatever else. Um, we've been through those hard times. Um, and, and, and I just need to say this too. Uh, you can look at it as struggling or you can look at it as, as looking, you can look at it as an adventure. Um, if you're going backpacking for a month out in the Rocky mountains someplace, what are you going to suffer? Well, yeah, there's no running water. There's no toilet. There's no, uh, you know, a lot of the amenities that you're used to, your nice comfy bed, your nice sofa, your lazy boy recliner or whatever else you have. Um, sure. But it's an adventure. It's a trip that you're going to remember for the rest of your life. Hey, you know what? Um, if you're saved and you and you decide, hey, let's let's just get away from this. This city thing, family. And then we can watch the stories of lost people. Lost people do it better than saved people. How shameful. But they go and they say, you know what? We're done. I'm, I'm just done with this mortgage thing. That's done with this rent thing. I'm finished. Let's sell what we have. Let's make as much money as we can. And we're going to take that money. And we're going to, you know, we'll go stay, stay at a relative's house. Or we'll go here. We'll go there. Um, go camping. Be nomadic. Let's go stay in the south during the, the winter and move up north during the, the you know, summer. Or whatever, or whatever the Lord calls you to do. I mean, there's there's rural areas, you know, country areas in every state that you can get to, you know, and don't just go camp on somebody's land. I mean, you, you know, you have to be wise about it, but there's places that you can get to. But you better get it done because you're running out of time. Learn how to take standing showers. Again, you can do that today, right now. Um, I can take a shower without even using one gallon of water. Um, get your health in check. Okay, the standing shower. What is a standing shower? Just let me give you some advice here. Um, I guess I could do a whole video on, on off-grid practical things that you can do. Um, a standing shower is, I mean, a lot of people do this even with running water and whatever else. You get an older person, they can't get upstairs to the master bedroom or bathroom or whatever to take a shower. Well, you just take a washcloth and just a little bit of soap. Don't use too much soap. And, but you take a little bit of soap and you just put on your washcloth, your wet washcloth, and you, you clean yourself like that. And, the you know, the 
down the private area and then under your arms and whatever and make sure you wash your face and things and you you rinse that off with some water and you you know then you get your wash wash washcloth nice and wet and you you wash your the soap off and you dry yourself and you're fine you're clean um you can pour water over your head if you really want to do it that way um you know there's there's a lot of ways that you can do things that most people think is just impossible uh, composting toilets. You can you know, look up this thing of a sawdust toilet. How does a sawdust toilet work? You have access to sawdust or you can use other, you know, things like that. And, and, uh, and instead of actually putting your, your, you know, waste into a tank in the ground with, you know, using three, two to three gallons of water each time you flush your toilet, um, you can actually take your waste and compost and it turns into soil. I mean, uh, modern flush toilets are one of the worst inventions ever. I mean, it takes seven different things to make them work. Uh, you know, they're, they're just awful. Again, I could talk more about that. Um, the thing of food. Uh, start start researching ways. Again, I don't want you to think out there that, oh, I, I just got to be there and I got to be online and I have to make sure that I'm just, you know, witnessing to people and everything else. And, and I see bad stuff coming. and I just have to kind of turn a blind eye and say, well, the Lord will take care of me. The Lord doesn't always take care of people that go into a, a bad time of where his judgment hits a city. The Lord might choose to make, let you go through that. All right. Um, Christians have gone through that bad stuff, but there are Christians that escape. There have always been a remnants of Christians that have gone and they scatter and they get out and they say, oh, persecution's coming here. Okay, let's go this way. And the Lord can give you an opportunity to go out and spread his word. Imagine if all the Christians were mobile and just went out into the country areas and they were going and witnessing to people and whatever else. Something to think about. Um, learn wild edibles in your area. I mean, literally, there's whole just hundreds of, of thousands of pounds of wild edibles, wild apples, wild choke cherries, wild raspberries, wild blueberries. And nobody picks them in this area up here. Pennsylvania, where I was born and raised, Lancaster County, Pennsylvania, same exact thing. Drive down the roads and there's wine berries. We used to call them that kind of a red raspberry, black raspberries, blackberries, mulberry trees and, and black cherry trees. And, and people just drive right by. Free food. Free food. There's there's all sorts of things that you can do, but we've we've gotten so much into the, the modern culture of debt based living and all this other stuff. And we just oh, I just can't leave it. I don't know what it, I would do and everything. So. That's going to be it. Let's close with a word of prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, I do pray, Lord, that you would please convict um, the body of Christ out there. Uh, the lost world's been doing this stuff for a long time. They've been out there and not, you know, they've been getting out of debt and wandering around and, and living a very interesting life. And they're suffering, Lord, but we're we're supposed to suffer as Christians. And but we get so drawn into the this complacent comfort of modern living and we don't want to take any chances, Lord. And and um I'm guilty of it myself, Lord, sometimes and, and I just I pray that all of us would be challenged. And all of us would see the, the danger that's coming to this country. And Lord, I do pray that you would not spare this nation much longer. It's just this, the things that people say about you and the, and the mockery. And I just, I'm sorry, Lord, to be part of such a nation that's as wicked as, wicked as this. And I know, Lord, that your judgment is, is needed in this country. Um, there's children that are being hurt, Lord, on, and on levels that are just, horrifying please put an end to it lord and uh, i pray for the body of christ out there that they would get away from these areas where your judgment's going to hit the worst and um do what they can to escape and uh if there are those that are stuck in those situations then i pray that they would just face death bravely and that they would not compromise and that uh, we would all get serious lord because time is running out and i ask it all in the name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen A rough one very rough to go through this i've been really struggling with this study it's been a long time in my mind so 
there's things that we can do. Um, so, uh, I've been seeing a lot of stuff's been going on over here. I, I'm just, I'm getting back. Um, so, um, yeah, I, I watch uh, different guys, trends, forecasters, and, and the one guy, he literally just broke down and started crying, and he said, I've been saying this thing's coming to this this country, and he said, it just breaks my heart because it's coming, and it's not going to, we're not getting out of it. America's going to be destroyed, and it's it's sad, and it breaks my heart. I don't like to think about it, but uh, brethren, we have to do something. We have to get ready. So, um, any questions out there? Uh, <clears throat> about the combination of women with angels, the film City of Angels, an angel makes it possible to make oneself human for being with a woman. Disgusting. Crosses television, Jesuitical theater. Yeah, it is. It's just, I mean, you can actually look into it and you can actually see that the Jesuits were behind a lot of the film ratings, the PG-13, the G and all that other stuff. Um, so, yeah. Comment on the subject. Government in Wales, UK made sex education mandatory in schools starting from th ages three and up. In years, six children will now be watching a film on sex education. Yeah. Yeah. Public schools are, are they were vile when I was young. And they're just so much worse now. Um, so, you know, brother, I, I want the best for everybody. I really do. And it, it just, yeah. Um, how can I su survive the winter if I leave the city now? By living small, living tiny. It takes very, very little heat. I mean, I literally have a wood stove. It's called a, a grizzly stove. And I mean, you can put it in a van there. I mean, watch some of the videos on tiny house living. I mean, you can you can live really easily and, and very well and you'll be cold. There'll be times that, you know, you go through cold, but it's adventure. You know, look at it that way. I'm telling you, I mean, you just just spend <clears throat> spend the day. Um, you're not going to be leaving the Lord or whatever else. Just study how to get away from the cities and, and how to how watch tiny house videos. Watch you know, van living and whatever else, man, it's just amazing. The stuff the Lord can do for you. I mean, these people that are in the new age movement, I mean, I, my heart aches for them. I just think, Oh, you've got so much right with the thing of having food and raiment. Let us be there with content. You, you know, they're living, they're going out there eating wild edibles and, and organic, you know, working on farms and things. It's, it's, it's an amazing life, but they just don't have the salvation thing. Right. I think, man, if Christians were doing the same thing, think of the witnessing opportunities we would have. Um, question, what, question, what do I do as a single young woman? I live with my single mom and two young siblings. Well, if you're living in the city, you need to start talking to your family about getting away and you might have to do something radical to get away before things really fall apart in this country. Um, question, are Christian communes biblical and should we live together or in unison? Um, well, I would say that, uh, it's, it's a the Christian commune concept is, is, okay but there's the concept too of the thing of having your own well having your own home and whatever and and uh i'm not against christians living together in community but boy you, you have to have rules and, and you have to have things there and, and it's you know i mean when things get real bad there's going to be people that are going to really overlook a lot of the differences and of opinion and, and things like that um you know, something that, that you have to think about there. Just, I mean, if you have some people that you can get together with and whatever else, and you could all go buy together and buy some land and have enough privacy on that land that you can kind of respect each other. And I mean, the old saying, uh, many hands make light work. I think it, it goes, and I think that that's great. I think that if, if some people can get together and buy some land um, and, you know, kind of help each other and whatever, I think that that's a great thing. Um, yep. Okay. Um, statement. I listen to you, brother. That's why I'm now here in Montana. 
and I thank you for that brother. I'm glad that you listened. I'm sure you don't regret it. Um, and I mean, you get out of nature and it's just, it's breathtaking. Sometimes you wake up and the, and the sunbeams coming through the forest and the trees and then the sound of birds in the morning. And, and it just, Oh man, you'll never, ever regret it. I don't care how much of a born and raised in the city person you are, you get out into the country and it is just, it's amazing. You know, Um, question, brother, you said Europe was part of future prophecy during your study. Could you elaborate on that? I'm in Sweden. Thanks. Um, well, look at Sweden. I mean, you, you know, your country is very high tech. Uh, there's a lot of articles saying that Sweden, you know, is, is looking at becoming a cashless society. Um, you know, Sweden didn't do the lockdown thing. So Sweden is better off economically. Didn't totally destroy the economy like here in America. Um, but you have the 10 kings there there's a prophecy of the 10 kings i believe it's in revelation 17 um let me just check real quick i'm pretty sure it's in revelation 17 that there's 10 kings and they hate the whore and whatever else um uh, let's see here yeah the revelation 17 verse 12 and the 10 horns which thou sawest are 10 kings which have received no kingdom as yet but receive power as kings one hour with the beast um, so there is there is a future prophecy there where the you know the European Union I think is going to kind of merge into this ten kings thing, and um, not sure how it's all going to work out yet. Again, I don't understand everything perfectly in the Book of Revelation, but certainly um, Europe there's there's the the different kingdoms and things there, and your power grid over there in Europe again is so much better than ours here in America. I mean. We literally have electric lines that are spliced together. You can drive anywhere in America. The infrastructure in America is awful. It's just terrible. And, you know, again, I've studied that and, and the, the cost of bringing our infrastructure up, be it fixing the roads, the bridges, the electric lines, it's just not going to happen with a nation that's so badly in debt like America. Um, so... Good question. Uh, what do you classify as a city? Um, well, I would say when you get up into the millions of numbers of population center. Um, I would say if there's a lot of problems, if there's, uh, you know, I mean, there's, there's quote unquote cities here in Maine that are, they're tiny compared to New York City or Los Angeles or Chicago or Miami or something. But um, I would say if you can look at it on a map, like, a, and there's just, miles and miles and miles of just streets and streets and streets and streets and there's more than a million living there i would say that's a city um and i mean you're you know moving out into the suburbs at least you know if you can see if there's more trees than houses i'll say it that way <laughs> then you're in a better spot um if there's more houses and more buildings than trees well i mean that's pretty basic but You know, you, you just want to get to a place. Um, there's a you want to get to a place where you can be safer, you know, where if things get bad, you know, I remember hearing years ago that they would go to Africa, the UN troops, United Nations troops would go into Africa to forcibly vaccinate the people and the people would run out of their village and go hide in the jungle. OK, that's the concept I'm trying to get through to people. Do you have a place where you can go hide if things get real bad? Um, you know. I mean, in worst case scenario, I'm talking, you didn't prepare, you have no other choice, but to just get out with the clothes on your back, kind of like Lot uh, did with Sodom and Gomorrah. You know, he runs out into the mountains. You know, first he wanted to go to a, another city, but then he sees the Sodomites are there too. And he, okay, got to get out into the mountains. Are you able to do that where you're at? So, um, Question, is it wise to walk away from my debt in order to get out off grid out of the city and let's let my vehicles that I owe be repossessed? I have one that I own. Um, that's something you're going to have to pray about. I think that it's good to pay off your debts and everything, but um, when it's a survival situation, you might not have a choice. Uh, you know, 
what's coming to this country, I think it, it's really be wise to say, okay, I'm going to try to really, you know, save up here and, and whatever else. And I, I need to do this to survive. Um, Question, who is God speaking with when he said, let us make man in our image? In Genesis, book of Genesis. I have a whole video on that. He was speaking body, soul, and spirit are separate things. They're not separate individual persons. They're separate parts of one God. So the body and the soul can speak to each other and the spirit can speak as well. That is who he was speaking to. He was not speaking to angels or another person or another God or something. Um, the Bible does not teach that. Um Question on what you said earlier, and for someone like me who has both options, is off grid better in Europe or the US? Hmm. Um, there's probably not going to be as much land off grid in Europe, although I would say some of the northern, you know, areas, northern Sweden, northern, northern Finland, you know, kind of those areas, probably going to be pretty remote. Um, I've seen some of the channels out there that that are some of the north really cold regions. When you get into the really cold regions, you're going to have a lot more freedom up there, um, definitely. Um, I'll say it this way. Um, northern, off-grid in Europe, you're going to have a lot better access to things in the future. Um, America, I think the future of America is going, going to be basically a third world country, which has its own benefits. I've been in third world countries. I've been in Honduras um, down there, and they actually had a lot more freedom than Americans. Go figure. Um, and, uh, ironically, a lot of their diet was, was healthier, you know, because they eat the food from their, that they can pick and grow and whatever else right there. And, uh, they were, they were having a wild, um, they made sort of, sort of a wild, um, orange juice. It wasn't really like the, the oranges that are grown in America. And I had some health issues and they were gone within days of drinking their, handmade wild orange juice right from the backyard. Um, so a lot of times a third world country is actually a good thing. And if America turns into a third world country, like if a lot of people leave this area here in Northern Maine, it's going to be pretty good here. And if you're out in the country when America falls financially and it's just kind of, okay, you're going to have to get by. I mean, we might, we might have to go through a few years of just, you know, living, off the land kind of a thing and whatever and it would be very trying and probably going to lose a lot of weight uh, we'll all be you know pretty skinny i think but uh people did it for thousands of years everything's fine for thousands of years you know people living without electric and everything else and then we just have to have it now so um it depends on how america goes i think uh depending where you're at you know off grid in america or up in canada you're not really going to see a lot of the violence. I mean, we're not seeing anything here. Um, I mean, on our main street of our little town here in Northern Maine, I saw somebody put up Black Lives Matters posters and I ripped them down. <laughs> that was that was the extent of our, our Black Lives Matter movement here. Um, so, because, you know, I don't want that stuff growing in this area. That's why I did that. Um Yeah, I'm trying to get caught up here on down through. Ex-Mason informant has said that the world will be unrecognizable by Christmas. They are ready and so confident that they aren't bothering to keep things quiet. They know most people won't believe anyways. Yeah, I believe that. I believe it's not going to be the same world in you know a couple months. By next time this year, it's going to be a totally different life. No idea what's going to happen. Um, What's well, going to be bad? Um, question. Do you think the power of the spoken word is a thing? I'm not referring to all that the KGB says about the wit wickedness of the tongue. Um, the word of faith movement, I think, is what you're talking about, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, you got to be careful with some of that stuff. I would just I would caution you on that. Um, question. A lot of misunderstanding about the Bible can be because people do not understand who the particular scripture is written to in England. Yeah. You know, 
I mean, all scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction and in righteousness. That's there. But yeah, you have to be careful dispensationally and, and who are things written to, you know? Yeah. Um, question. I have spoken with several brethren on this. I personally believe there will be a trigger event to bring in the second wave extreme maxims. Your thoughts. Um, very possible. I don't know. I'd like to think it's the catching up of the body of Christ because they could certainly kick in things after that happens. But I mean, there, there's, you know, yeah, Bill Gates saying about the next pandemic, it's going to be worse and whatever. And the black Pope, the head of the Jesuit order. And he's saying, you know, if you don't listen, if people try to go back to the old way, the things, the way the world was, then the next, you know, the next one will be worse. They have the, the the Jesuit order and all these other secret societies. These they're they're all about money. They're all about wanting to, to to kill off large portions of people because they they learn to, to to control populations and they get a lot of people to work in their factories. But now the factories are all overseas, so they don't need all the people anymore, and so they want to come up with ways. I mean. You got to think like them sometimes. The Bible talks about being wise as serpents and harmless as doves. Wise as a serpent. Wise as these snakes out there. How would they do this? If I was in their mind, how do you to get control of a population? But it, we're to be harmless as doves. We're not to act like that. We're not to do those things. How, how do politicians, how do world leaders eliminate their population? Well, disease is a great way to do it. And how do you bring in disease? By getting control of the food supply, um, poisoning the food supply, like they've been doing for years with all their excitotoxins and all their additives and high fructose corn syrup, aspartame, um, you know, monosodium glutamate, I mean, all this stuff. Make the population sick, lower their immune system, and then you bring in some kind of a disease that can kill off the population. That's a good way to do it. War is another good way to do it. Um, you know, let's let's start World War Three. Let's let's have, you know, terror attacks and whatever else. So could they be planning something for the near future? Quite possible. Very possible. Um, they're, they're just constantly stirring this this racial thing, the racial tension type of thing, getting black people to hate white people, and white people to hate black people. You know, this little boy that got shot in the head by this black neighbor comes over, a little white boy, my son's age and phew, kills him. What's it doing? It's getting all of the white people angry at the blacks. Black Lives Matter. Oh, you know, I saw this report this morning and they were saying that the, you know, the number of COVID deaths is much higher in among the blacks and things. Yeah, because the blacks go into the hospitals and they're eliminating them because blacks, a lot of them don't have the money to fight the system, you know, and, and so they go in that the, you know, Planned Parenthood goes after the blacks. A lot of a lot of the things, the, the Tuskegee experiment. Where they were giving, you know, the CDC basically, I think it was, gave black men syphilis and then sat back and watched what happened out in the population. A matter of documented history, you know, this this is the world we live in. Okay, you have to just accept that. Um, I'm getting really far behind here. Just got to say this. Wish I had a log cabin out in the middle of nowhere. Just go fishing every day. Um, you can have a log cabin on wheels, okay? Study the thing of just getting a, a cheap van. I mean, like I said, there's a video on YouTube. Woman buys a $1,500 U-Haul truck, puts a couple hundred dollars into it, gets the thing running good, and you can drive to wherever you want. You're camping, you know? I mean, I've, I've done it, um, you know, with our ambulance. We bought an old ambulance. You know, they call them campulances. And uh, you can go around and you can... You're free. You can go do whatever you want. 
Um, I live in a tiny village under 750 population in Ohio in the foothills of the Appalachians. I firmly believe that God brought us here years ago. Amen. That's great. Praise the Lord. That's neat to hear. Um, it's it's wonderful. I mean, you know, again, people, oh, I just don't know if I can live in a tiny house. We live in a tiny house. We have for a year now. And, you know, it's it's very easy to clean. And, you know, it, it gets you into this thing of, of, do I really need all this stuff? And you said, no, I don't, you know, and, and you simplify your life and, and you're happy and you're content. And, you know, how do I survive the winter? Well, if you live in a tiny house, it's easy. You know, we, we barely use any firewood. We literally this past winter, I cooked on our wood stove and I heated up in the morning and in the evening. And that's it. Two times a day, I made fires in our wood stove and it kept the place nice and warm all day. And, you know, not even that nice of a, of a, tiny house either on my head not something that i would build in other words recycled housing um in living off grid what are some ways to cool a house in the summer you had to ask that didn't you <laughs> um uh it's not easy that's one thing that you have to put up with um quite frankly the best thing to do to cool your tiny house is not to be in the tiny house um there are battery powered fans that you can get. We have some, uh, DeWalt makes a 20 volt cordless work site fan. And we have you know, three of those, one for each of us. And that helps, but it's still, I mean, we've had nights where it was 90 plus degrees inside our tiny house and it was rough. And I've been struggling with the thing of not getting much sleep over the last two months. Um, but we recently got a tent. We had an, a tent, but it was too, it was a real small, like, two person, three person tent. And so you can get a tent. A lot of people will stay in tents throughout the summer months. Um, different ways that you can do it. You can go swimming a lot in, in the summertime and things. So have you heard about Walmart planning drive-in movies for their parking lots to attract families? I think it's going to be a way to gate and control their parking lots with security guards. <laughs> Good point. I, I No, I did not hear about that. I've heard that uh, Walmart is actually going to start selling secondhand clothing. Walmart just wants to take over the, the economy. It's disgusting what they've done. Um, That's a good comment. In the days of Noah, it was business as usual. People ate, married, and Noah was able to, to move freely and continue to build the ark until he entered in and closed the door. Then came destruction. Amen. Um, Uh, is there an app where I can read the King James Bible? Probably, but uh, you can go to a dollar store and you can pick them up for a dollar. They're not that expensive. Get a print one. It always works. You don't need electricity. Um Question, I struggle with phone addiction. Too much time spent on YouTube, etc. But do these addictions drive us further away from God? And God and will God stand afar from us? I want healthy fellowship with God. When you are in sin, yes, the Lord will he'll back off a little bit. He will let you be chastened. I'm just gonna be honest. Again, I'm speaking from experience. Um, I'm not gonna lie to you and just say, Oh, oh my do God loves you no matter what you do. God loves you. Nothing shall separate us from the love of God when you're saved, when you're born again. But there are some things that you can do. And the Lord will just flat out punish you badly. Um, and I struggle. I struggle with that. I struggle with wasting too much time on the computer and whatever else. Um, I struggle with that. And uh, you have to get away from it. Thank you for your comments. You're making some real good ones here. People living in cold areas need not need to think about getting a wood stove if they will not deliver fuel, oil, or propane, or if you heat with electric. Yeah, 
uh, wood stoves are the best, but as you can heat a fairly tiny, small, you know, area of surface, you know, a, a tiny space with wood very easily. But you can, depending on if it's not real cold, like way up north, like where we're at, um, you can actually heat with a small little electric heater and whatever, or a small little propane heater. Propane heaters, the problem with them is they do put off uh, a lot of condensation. So you'll start to have, you know, moisture problems inside, especially if you live like in a, like if you would buy a travel trailer, motorhome, RV type of thing, they, they really can get a lot of condensation, which turns into mold. Um, so you got to be careful of that. Again, brethren, do the research. What type of thing would be best for you? There's a lot that you can do. Um, Question, should I flee to South America if that is an option? If you can, yeah. There's a lot of places in South America that are very, very uh, remote. If you are uh, able to get down there, yeah. I'm sure there's some really great places. Um, question, are the spirits in 1 Peter 3, 18 through 20 uh, angels or lost souls? I'm pretty sure they're angels. Um, let me just get there real quickly. Let me make sure I get the first Peter three eighteen through twenty. For Christ also hath once suffered for sins the just for the unjust that he might bring us to God, being put to death in the flesh, but quickened by the Spirit, by which also he went and preached unto the spirits in prison. Um, okay, no, that's not the angels there. That's uh, saints in the Old Testament, uh, which sometime were disobedient. No, actually, no. Spoke too soon. I was thinking about the thing of led captivity captive. Which sometime were disobedient when once the long suffering of God awaited in the days of Noah, while the ark was a preparing, wherein few that is eight souls were saved by water. Okay, yes, it is angels. I'm sorry. <laughs> My mind's not thinking correctly. Yes, they were the angels that sinned that, that kept not their first estate. They came down under the daughters of men. Yes. Um Question. Thank you for staying, staying the course over the years. We read today in Hebrews 11, 7, that Noah took care of his own house, not father, mother, grandparents, aunts, and uncles that are lost. Huh. Another rough one. Yeah. It grieves my heart to know that uh, my parents at this point in time, I love them very much, but uh, they're just swallowing the whole thing, hook, line, and sinker. And I have tried to warn them, and they're not getting it. And it's just my siblings i don't even talk with most of my siblings they've disowned me uh am i am i concerned would i would i weep if i heard that they were killed yeah i would but uh people you know most of them think i'm crazy and uh it's not it's not uh you know oh look they've been taken over they've been killed down there ha gotcha i was right you were wrong not at all i don't have that attitude but I know that if I tried to bring my relatives here, it would be just fighting and war and contention and just, sorry, see ya. Um, we moved to Maine and I don't regret it and I'm not looking back. We moved to a new country. I thank the Lord for that. Question, I don't know where to begin studying the Bible with my son. He's starting Bible studies with a 10-year-old too early. As far as I've been, so, so far I have been reading different books from the Old Testament, New Testament. I keep emphasizing the fact that man is a sinner and Jesus Christ is the Lord and Savior. Main struggle is though it goes into one ear and out the other. I don't show him any Bible movies or cartoons, just read the Bible. It is tough. If they're going to, to secular school and whatever else, I know your husband's blocking 
you from trying to read to them at home and things. Um, it's, it's rough. It is, a, it is, it's just something that, you know, you, you're just going to have to pray about. i uh, very fervently pray about. And if the Lord has to get you out of that situation and you take your son with you, the Lord might make something happen to your husband. I'm sorry to have to say that, but you have to be willing to just say, okay, Lord, uh, I'm willing to suffer. If it comes down to it, I'm willing to lose my husband and whatever. I want to raise my son the right way. Um, swimming where? Um, there's lakes and, and rivers and whatever else. Um, there's ways to get out there and, and go swimming. Um, and I, I don't mean, you know, swimming suits and the whole thing. I realize that that's a, another issue. Um, but uh, I mean, we used to have a spring at our one property. We, we have some at our current property, but it's not as easily accessible. Um, and we would just go in the summertime and we'd scoop spring water out of the spring and just pour it. And it's, you know, like 50 degree temperatures, even on the hottest days. And it just, oh, it takes your breath away. <laughs> but you feel really good for a while. Um, to cool off a house, if possible, put it into a group of trees. Also look into a swamp cooler. Yeah, the swamp cooler thing is okay. There's there's a lot of stuff that you can study. Um, man, I'm... Yeah. Um, question is land in your area is still 500 to 700 an acre. And do you know of small insulated sheds for sale built by Amish in the area? Um, the Amish, I don't really want to give any Amish money. Um, they're, they're so messed up and whatever else, but, uh, land, you can find land cheaper if it's off grid. Um, if it's been logged recently, I can go down as low as 200 an acre told to me by the real estate agent that I know in this area. Um, depending on how bad the logging was and people are logging like crazy in the area right now. Um, I'm sure probably in other States too, you're probably seeing a lot of logging being done. Um, people are just trying to get as much money as they can off, you know, out of their land before things fall apart. So, um, you, you just have to search around for, it. um, you know, colder climates are going to be cheaper, but you know, I mean, I know brethren that have bought land down in Florida too, out kind of out in the middle of nowhere. Question, do you think that in the days of Noah, they were just as, if not more technologically advanced than now? That's an interesting theory. I don't know. I think that they were very intelligent. I mean, if you live 900 plus years, you're going to learn a few things. <laughs> so um, a lot of technology is actually limiting. It's not, it's not, uh, hey, we're really intelligent. It actually makes you dumber. <laughs> um, again, that's a whole other issue I could go off on. Um, question, which videos do you talk about being debt free and living off grid? Well, I, I it's interspersed throughout all the different years I've been around. Um, but I have a video, the thing about what does the Bible say about being in debt and insurance policies and things like that. Um, uh, let me just look at this one here. In Romans 12, 2, is it three separate will of God of, or one, I think you mean, or one will of God? Um, Romans chapter 12. Oh, yeah, okay, I'm thinking, thinking of something else here. Romans chapter 12, verse 2, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is that good 
and acceptable and perfect will of God. Yeah, there are three separate wills of God there for your life. There are things that you can do that are good. There are things that you can do that are acceptable and things that you can do that are the perfect will of God. Yes. Good question. Um, should I try a small town or completely off grid on our own? Um, small towns are, are good if you can find them. Um, you know, if you can get a little bit of land attached with the, the house or whatever. Um, I'll give you everybody out there another piece of advice, a good one for going off grid, and that is you might not be able to find land. But if you can buy an old foreclosed home or an old rundown shack or something like that, someplace that you know you wouldn't dare want to live in, but you buy it and then you park a travel trailer or tiny home or even a tent like a yurt is another one. Y-U-R-T, look that up, yurt living. Um, they do it in Mongolia. It gets pretty cold in Mongolia. Um, and people do it in Alaska and things too. I know that the, you know there's others that have lived in yurts. Um, I've looked into the possibility. It's kind of a round tent. You can put insulation in it and all, all that stuff. Um, but you can live in a yurt. You can live in a, a wall tent. We did, you know, had one for a little bit um, on one of our properties, and it was actually really nice. Um, a lot of different things that you can do. And if you can buy a cheap, you know, property out in the country someplace and just park a trailer on it, well, there you go. You have your address. You have you know, your off grid place and you just simply say, well, I'm living in my tent while fix fixing up the house. And you just say, well, you know, it's going to take me a little bit of time to fix the place up. And, you know, you can do that. That's, that's another option. Um, so, Question, in Maine, the land that says this is a vacant land home, does that mean they are forcing you to build a home? I'm not really sure I understand that, brother. I'm, I'm, I'm not understand vacant land home. Are you, are you talking about like in a real estate ad? Um, not sure on that one. Um. But, you know, I'll, I'll just say this as far as the land in, in Maine is concerned. The, the laws here are very, very relaxed. They're very loose. Um, usually if you if you're just paying your property tax and, and again, property tax is not some kind of a rich taxing the poor and you don't really own your land or whatever. Property tax goes towards plowing the roads and public schools, which I think are stupid um, and should be stopped. Um, but they go to maintaining the area. Now, there's wasting of money i get that but there's a reason for property tax um but maine actually has uh legislation that was that was passed whereby you can actually build tiny homes legally you know with zoning approval and everything here in the state of maine so um, but there's there's old houses there's old cabins there's old places you know that you can get for pretty cheap and i mean you know west virginia there's land down there we've looked we looked at before we moved to Maine, Virginia, you know, down through some of the southern states, northern Pennsylvania up in there. But you got to be careful up there with the fracking thing. Your water, your well might be ruined, but you can always do rainwater catchment. That's another thing that you can do. Um, you know, so uh, there's there's a lot of good areas in, in America where you can go find land, remote land and live there. And uh, and of course, being mobile. If you can find a way to have an address someplace, you know, somebody says, hey, you can use our our mailing address or a P.O. box or whatever else. If you can do that, you can be mobile. Um, again, there's a lot of lost people that are doing this, that are living in RVs, living in vans and whatever else. Um, so. Hebrews 11, 23 through 29. I've read a lot of Hebrews chapter 11. 
Um, but I'll read that real quick, brother. Hebrews chapter 11, verse 23 through 29. By faith, Moses, when he was born, was hid three months of his parents because they saw that he was a proper child and they were not afraid of the king's commandment. Sometimes you have to deceive the deceptive government leaders. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Very much being on grid. There's a lot of pleasures that are, you know, you know, watching TV and whatever else. Those are sins for a season. Um, verse 26, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he had rec respect under the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Like, again, you know, brethren, you go off grid, you get away from the cities, you will live a life of adventure. I mean, we look back at our lives. I'm glad that I didn't have a stable just living in a nice house with a nice this and a nice that. I mean, we, we still talk about the adventures we've had, you know, and it, it's rough to go through at the time, but you, you come through it and you, and you, you look back and you laugh at it. You think, boy, that was wild. <laughs> you remember that time that this happened or remember that time we were out camping and that, that big moose came walking up and, you know, whatever else. I mean, we built a little cabin back on our property, just teeny tiny little thing, like a little shed. And, uh, and it's not being used anymore, but um, we, we built something as a shelter. And I remember this one night we're in there and I hear this, you know, something walking around outside and I sat up in bed and what is that? And I could hear this, you know, crunch, crunch, crunch outside. And I thought, oh man, there's somebody outside. And I get up and shine my flashlight out, you know, out there like this, you know, I'm doing like this with my hand. I'm, I'm shining my flashlight and here's this big bull moose and just, right outside of the cabin and he looks in at me and he's kind of you know what are you doing trying to light on me <laughs> uh it's neat you, you have adventure you know it's not a bad thing so um Question asked this earlier. Thanks for some of the answers. Just wondering what your thoughts were, Brian. Could Gentiles in the Old Testament be saved, or was that a thing only after Christ's death? Uh, Rahab the harlot would be a good example. She's in Matthew chapter 1. Um, yes, they could be saved. They you know, would have to come and be part of Israel. But, um, yeah, I do believe there were some that were saved. There's some... some uh, um, there's some... some uh, different people that think that Nebuchadnezzar the king of Babylon actually got saved after he was out living like an animal for a while um, so okay well I'm probably going to get going here we're just about one o'clock um, so um, get get active brethren do some research today don't wait okay um, if you're in a city area uh, make it a priority to get out of there. Um, when you get out into nature and you're sitting there and you hear the birds singing and you, um, you're, you, you feel the, the breeze and you, you can smell the smells of being out in, in nature somewhere and you have the freedom of, of having that life that you had before, just cut the strings to that and just say, I want to be debt free. Start out homeless and build up from there. Okay, food and raiment, let us be there with content. Okay, I'm down to that level. Now, let's build up. I have enough money for a tent. Hey, that's better than sleeping on the ground. I have enough money for a vehicle. That's better than sleeping in a tent. Hey, I have enough money to get some land. Praise the Lord. I can get an address in town or I can have an address at, at a relative's house or something or or whatever, um, that's better. I can start to forge for my own food. I'll pick your very first berry off out in nature someplace. Get to know the berries. Get to know raspberries and, and wild apples and whatever else. Um, go fishing. Go hunting. You know, get, be careful with that because you got the fishing and hunting licenses and things. So, you know, you got to be careful with that. But 
go to a little farm stand someplace out in the country, get some food and just pray and say, Lord, you direct me to where I'm supposed to go. You direct me. What am I supposed to do with my life? I'm going to trust you. Live by faith. Debt free living is living by faith. And uh, it's and, and, and view what you're going through as, boy, that was kind of a rough night that I, you know, I was kind of cold or it was kind of scary or whatever else. But that was an adventure. This is exciting. OK, um, don't fall for the complacency of the on grid, the whole thing. And I'm not saying you have to be off grid, by the way, either. Let me just make that point. If you move out to the country someplace and you can get a little house somewhere that's an on grid house and, and there's enough area that's you can go out and, and you can garden and whatever else hey praise the lord that's fine but even with an on-grid place you still have to have that backup okay what if the power goes out what if there is war and the power is knocked out can i get water can i have a bathroom that i can go to and be able to clean myself and and you know take care of things and whatever else think about it okay um So, all right, I'm going to end it there. Um, let's pray for each other, and uh, we'll see you in upcoming videos. And um, please, what more can I say? Just take heed to what I'm saying. Okay, brethren, rough times are coming. All right, that's going to be it, and we'll see everybody in the next video.